Hello. Okay. So today I am continuing with this prompt UI. Welcome everyone. Okay, so let's see where we left off. Okay, so talk to the mouse. We get this new UI here. This is what we were working on last time. Uh, would you like to learn the entire mouse language? That's a maybe just placeholder for now. That might change the, the actual text. Um, and then if I remember correctly, I can go down to select no, and then it bugs out. And I can't select another option. And I can't actually select the option yet. And that's where we left off. So first I'd like to fix the navigation so it doesn't get stuck on no. And then I'll work on the logic to actually choose the selection and have an outcome. Cool. Stop. All right. Just a little bit. Slow. There we go. Okay, so where were we? Um, so that's in prompt. prompt option. So we have this monologue controller. Oh yeah, everything's called monologue. <laughs> Maybe today I'll refactor that if I can think of a better name. But if not, I'm still going, still sticking with monologue. The monologue is opposed to the dialogue, so the speech bubbles that you see when talking to the mouse, for example. Those I consider dialogue. Uh, the box that pops up at the bottom, I've been calling it monologue because it's more about like sort of your inner thought, like you're deciding between these two options or, you know, you're thinking to yourself something. That's why I've been calling it monologue. A monologue box. We have a monologue controller. It doesn't have any anything in it. Monologue box. What's that? Okay, right here. So this is the actual box. The box can have text, and then it can also have these prompt options, I've been calling them, which in the example that I just showed, show again. I'm gonna add in some, you know, like chat overlays to the stream. I'm just maybe resizing it, make it a little bigger. Okay, so that animates in, then it shows the prompt options. I can select between them. 
So the selection between the prompt options is happening in the monologue box itself. Is that true? Yes. Highlight new option here. Let's figure out what's going on in here when I, when it's not moving. Focused index? Yeah, that's sort of like the current index. What is this offset? Focused index. And this is the monologue. Let's just watch and see what happens. So we got the debuggers down here. Or the console, whatever. Not really debugging. Okay, so I push down. Yeah, the previous focused index was zero. The offset was one, so it's adding one to that. So the, the new focused index should be it's a little bit bigger. I might need to make that bigger again. It fades away super quick. Um, let me see if I can... I have no idea if this... will fix it in line without refreshing it. I'm new to this. Um, edit. What am I looking for? Fade out time. So then here, if I push up, it's treating it negative one. So it's never updating the focus index. That's probably your problem. Uh. Okay, so it gets the options. Trims off the first one. The first one is the text. This leaves us with the prompt options. We have two of in this case. It, yeah, so I'm just never updating focused index is the problem. So down that works we go down again that works down works <laughs> up up again up works perfect um so you can down up down up and then if you push up again it loops back around um not super useful if there's only two options obviously you can just push up and down um but if there's more than one option if you push up It'll go to the bottom one. That's handy, and this is working now. You can see the focus index is actually updating. This is sort of the, the offset is the direction you're moving. Perfect. That system works quite well. Um, okay, can 
get rid of this. Can I maybe clean this up a little bit more? I'll probably do this. X. Clean up that line. Which is... Oh, well, whatever. I get the children. Slice off the first one. Unfocus the current one. Figure out the next one. Focused index plus offset. Positive modulo, modulus, modulo. Osmod with the size gives us the next index. It's probably for. Yeah, that's fine. Then we focus the next index and then we set the, set the current focused index. I think that works fine. Okay, actually, where is our, where are we going to get here? That, that. Oh, a box of scene. Oh, I deleted those. Okay, well, let's commit some of this. Not the save OST. Or, or I still don't really know what's going on with that. Okay. selection. That sounds fine. Push that up. Okay, how did I have this distinguished here? So I have prompt UI. Basically everything I'm working on now is encompassed by this prompt UI. I do want the return value to work. Um, so you can select an option. Really all I'm gonna do is return the, or not return, but push out a signal with the index. Um, in this case, there's two options. So the index will be zero or one. I'm just gonna respond with zero or one. And then whoever's listening, for the response, they will get zero one, and they can act on that. Um, Whoever is listening for the response is the one that set the prompt option, so they'll know which one corresponds to zero and one. You know, in this case, yes or no, but it could be other things. So, oops, I never saved that <laughs> before I committed. All I took out was that. Okay, that's fine. Hello. Oh, Raid, thank you. Hello, everyone. How was your stream, Nero? Uh, 
Um, we're building a little RPG in Godot Engine. I can show here what we're working on. Oh, Twitch chatbot and Rust, that's fun. I still never played with Rust. Uh, this is what we're working on. So you're a little raccoon here. <laughs> Raccoons. Um, and you got this little mouse friend here. You can talk to it. Um, part of the uh, sort of the main gameplay loop that I'm working on is this sort of language learning mechanic. So you can't actually understand what the mouse is saying um, because you don't speak their language. You only know bits, bits here and there. Uh, and they're wanting you to teach you the language and I'm working, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm actually working on this box right here right now, um, this little interaction box. So I have this sort of cursor selection working, but that's a foul mouth mouse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working. Uh, I think eventually I'm going to replace that with sort of like custom symbols that aren't like, you know, um, the standard like symbols so that it doesn't look like you're swearing. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the follow, Nero. Um, so yeah, right now you can sort of highlight these options, but you can't do anything with them yet. That's what I'm working on next. Um, and I'm doing this all in, oh, thanks. Yeah, everything's, I've drawn all the pixel art. Um, I'm actually completely learning game dev and pixel art from scratch to build this project, so. I appreciate the compliments. Um, I'm using Godot Engine here and GD Script, the sort of native Godot Engine language, to build this. Um, okay. So yeah, so the next step here that I'm working on is, oh, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's making the select work on that little, those little prompt options there. So, also I'm sort of doing this. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the raid. Uh, I'll, I'll have to check out your stream later, Nero. I've been meaning to learn rust, uh, here and there. I've just never gotten around to it. So it sounds super interesting. Twitch chatbot. Um, but thanks for joining. I'll see you around. All right. So yeah, I'm doing this a bit, bit of a hacky way. I find like, I'm just trying to get things, a lot of these things working before I come through and refactor in a little bit better way. So this process here, um, this checking the inputs. This is a bit hacky, but it gets the job done for now. Um, I'll do it a separate if. No, I'll do an LF. Is action just pressed? So, um, this is the interact. Um, on the keyboard, I have that bound to space. Hit it with your thumb. Where is that UI? Select? Is that what I have it said as? Oh, this is. Control interact, that's better. Okay, so if you press interact, make a new method here, highlight new option. I call this like submit option. Submit, is that the right word? Submit. 
return select select option uh no args and in fact no return i'm probably going to use a signal for this so this shouldn't be a return where is that signal go to the controller here. So I have this choose option. Monologue prompt choice. Oh, this is going to get messy. Yeah. So if I remember correctly, this is actually, so this is the monologue controller. It has this choose option. It's emitting the signal with the index. Um, I haven't actually wired that up yet, but it's actually it's player itself that's listening to, for this, which is extremely hacky. So I have this forward forward monologue prompt result. Um, if I go back up here to set up ready. No, I don't. Where is that wired in? Oh, and display monologue. Okay, so when I go to display the monologue box, I'm wiring up this signal. So this is the, if I look at the player hierarchy here, the player has this monologue controller. The monologue controller can emit a signal up to the player when a, when a selection is made by the by the actual player <laughs> and then the player object can actually forward that on to whoever is listening to the player in this case it would be the mouse the mouse is listening to the player for a response this is what it's actually listening to so I'm <sighs> I sort of have this chaining of signals. I don't know. I have no idea if this is a good way to do this or not. Um, but now I'm worried. So the monolith controller. The monologue box. So the monologue box or the, yeah, the monologue controller instantiates the monologue box right here. When it goes to display the monologue. It will check if there's an existing one. There generally shouldn't be. Um, if there is, it gets rid of it, makes a new one, pulls display on it with the monologue data. The monologue data has the like text and the options in it. Um, it emits a signal to take control for input. Hmm. So I think the problem is, the problem here is, is that I built these controls into the monologue box. It's actually the monologue controller that should be doing this. So I'm going to quickly refactor that. So let's get rid of this. Um, let's actually comment that out for now. So highlight new option, I say. So I think what I'm actually going to do is make this public, both of these public. This will be like. Okay, 
So instead of calling this private method here, I'm actually going to call it on the instance. Um, what am I doing? Let's just copy. Like that. Let's see how badly that broke things. Hopefully that should just work. And it just works. Okay, so that's better. So the, mo so the actual monologue box is just the display. Um, and these sort of methods here. And it's the monologue controller that is actually gonna call down into this rather than this handling anything. Um, that way I don't need to send a signal back up from this to the monologue controller. The monologue controller will just know everything. So that means that this will be, this will return the index here. Well, thanks, Nero, for following on Twitter. Um, so really, all this is going to do is return the focused index. Simple. Oops, not an index. Um, int. That's easy. Okay. Went back in the monologue controller here. Um, choose option. Okay, so this is not going to have a param or argument. But then here I have my other LF. If you press control interact, I'm going to do monolog box instance dot. What do I call this? Select option. Right? Wait. Choose option. No, I'm going to do choose option. Um, this should be probably private. No reason not to be public. And then in here, Get the selected index from the monologue box instance. Um, select option. Should probably also be just for consistency called select option. Okay. We have the selected index. That's what you'll send back in the signal. And then actually what I want to do here is close the monologue box. Let's make that private. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's probably good enough in here. So that should let's um let's just add some debug, debug statements in here. Um, just so I can test this all out. So if everything's working, this should emit the signal, should close, literally just destroys it, that's fine. Okay, this should ship that signal up to the player right here, because it should have been connected here. So we should see That index come through here. This is player. Okay, and then that sends out that signal, monologue prompt response, the mouse, prompt player to learn language. Okay, this is definitely, this is really the main area here that will likely be refactored at one point. Um, I have a lot of this kind of mouse quest stuff hard coded here. Um, in mouse, mouse.gd. Um, this will all be abstracted out at some point into this sort of quest giver class here. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, a prompt player to learn language. If player has display monologue, so we're yielding here. We already have this debug set up for the response. Let's see what happens. Um, okay, so we're watching for debug statements down here. So we get the prompt. Let's say no, no should be one. Okay, interesting. So the monologue controller. <laughs> So what happened? So the connection between, so I got the selected index here and it closed the monologue box. The signal didn't seem to make it to the player. This never got hit. So monologue, so if, Make sure we're hitting this. So this is just like connecting monologue from. signal connect 
Connect <laughs> monoglog. Connecting monoglog from choice signal. Oh, I renamed this at some point. There's a big problem. Um, I don't know if this specifically is going to get fixed at some point, but Godot and GDScript rely a lot on these sort of strings. So for example, here, this connect function, it takes in this string here, which is actually a signal. Um, but rather than taking in a signal or some kind of signal identifier type, it just takes in a string, which is the name of the signal. This is a reference to the object that you want to connect to. And then here is another string of the name of the method on the object that you want to connect to. So in this case, I'm connecting the monologue prompt choice signal from monologue controller to self the player class here and the method forward monologue prompt result so yeah because this is a string if i renamed at some point i renamed this to forward did not update that string and broke it so let's try it again and see how far we get this time. Skip, skip, skip. Connecting the choice. I click no. Oh, there we go. So we can see the monologue controller had selected index one. Pass that on to the player, selected index one. The player passed that on to the mouse, and the mouse converted that one back to its the prompt option to no. So the mouse knows that you responded no. Perfect. So that's working. Um, let's actually commit that maybe. So, because I refactored that into the monologue controller, so the actual control, input controls. Uh, let's take out some of those debugs. I don't need to commit these. Okay, monologue box, that looks good. That looks good. This. Okay, let's commit this, so. This is the monologue. <laughs> what am I calling this? Monologue prompt return monologue. prompt uh, returning selection or something like that. Return selection. Okay, so now the mouse, so the mouse gets this prompt, scoot this up a bit. So we have this response here. So the mouse essentially like display monologue. Um, this is sort of like, this is pushing this monologue data to the player. In this case, it's a question. Um, maybe some of this could be reworded or um, sort of renamed. These are sort of bad names, like monologue data, display monologue. <laughs> really, the mouse is asking a question here, so really abusing the word monologue. Um, but the idea being the idea calling this monologue was that, oops, stop, was that when you talk to the mouse, 
hiding behind the tree. This is the sort of dialogue right here. And it's, there, it's saying I can teach you my language if something, something, I don't remember what it's saying. Um, this is the dialogue here. And then this is sort of like, sort of like internally, you're like, would you like to learn this? That's why I've been calling this a monologue. So you could say, yes, I want to learn it. Prompt response, yes. Okay, so now I just need to act on that. So I'm going to do this in a hacky way. Um, and then figure out how I want to refactor later. So if response is zero, which is yes. Um, okay, so I want to refactor some of this stuff up here. Prompt. Come companion. This ugly nested if here. Yeah, let's sort this out. So if scoot this in a little bit. If you're currently tracking the quest. If you've satisfied the quest conditions. I see you're passing that in as the callback. Um, yeah, so I'm, this is the dialogue node here. This is like the, what controls the speech bubble. Um, so if you've completed the quest, it passes this text to the speech bubble along with this callback here. And the callback is this prompt player to learn language. So the callback happens after all the text is done, all the speech bubble is complete. That makes sense. Um, and before that happens, before the text is, you're finished reading the text or whatever, it completes the quest for you also goes through because this is an item possession quest it takes the item away which is the little cheese okay so that's this that's you know still kind of hard coded and weird but it's good enough for now this else here quest tracked but not complete so yeah, if the mouse has already given you the quest, you're currently tracking it, but the conditions aren't satisfied, it just complains to you. That's fine for now. All this dialogue and stuff is sort of placeholder. So if you're not tracking the quest, so this is the case, you're not tracking the quest, but you actually already completed the quest. This is the sort of option that I'm working on right now. What is this, you know? Gosh. Um, this is sort of the option I'm working on right now. Is it the option I'm working on right now? Prompt. That was up here. 
Oh yeah, that's how it happens when you, oof. So this is what happens when you talk to the mouse again after this. I can show that, let's just see what happens. Uh, okay, so you talk to the mouse, skip, skip, skip. Would you like to learn a language? Sure. Nothing happens yet. What? Oh, interesting. Oh, I think that I think the recent update to Godot actually broke this. Let me debug this. Um, I cannot do it in process. Let's do log dot. I think because before you used to be able to queue the queue free when you queue freed this. Like for example, when I close it here, I'm queue freeing. It used to get rid of this and it used to would like for example in this case this thing here would set this to be null does this return something you free accuse a node for deletion variable pointing to the node it will not be assigned null once the node is freed instead it will point to a previously freed instance and you should validate it before attempting to call methods is instance valid yeah this was changed a little bit um That should probably just fix it. I don't need to debug this. Let's just try that. Make sure I fix that before I move on. Oh, what happened? Why did everything just minimize? What on earth did I press for that? That was super weird. Non-existent, oh gosh. I have to do some. Something like that. So yeah, basically when you queue this free, it sets this to be something like, it's like, I don't know, whatever it just described, like some kind of placeholder of like a freed object which is truthy, so this passes, but it doesn't have this method on it anymore because it's not actually there. So you also need to add in this check here is instance valid, which specifically checks for those, I don't know, sort of like freed, freed objects. Let's make sure that worked. Uh, non-existent function. Okay, great. This is super annoying. Why on earth would that be non-existent? Is instance valid? Oh gosh, I'm calling it wrong. That's why. It's not this. Um, it's this. So if I'm doing, uh, I 
it's just red now. I guess that's fine. I might not need that then. Let's try that again. Perfect. Okay. That fixed it. Um, let's actually commit that little fix. Right there. Um, what's this dialog box? Oops. Monologue box. Check if monologue box hasn't been freed. Descriptive enough. Okay. Where was I before? In here? Oh yeah, I was gonna refresh my memory about what happens when you talk to the mouse again after that. So you talk to them. Um, I temporarily have the notifications disabled over here. So in this case right here, I don't know if you caught that, but this text, quest text up here disappeared. Cheese disappeared. It would actually pop up a thing down here that says like quest completed. Um, I have that disabled right now because it actually conflicts here. The UI conflicts a little bit. Um, I didn't want to fix the notifications yet. <laughs> I'm probably going to move them up here into the top right and have them sort of grow down instead of bottom left growing up. I think that'll be better and it'll conflict to less with the UI that I'm adding down at the bottom here. Oh, actually, I should put that in my to-do. I don't know if I actually wrote that down. I'll add that. Um, move notifications to the top right corner. Put that up here. The prompt UI, prompt UI is actually complete now, I would say, at least the first iteration of it. Yeah, it's returning, it lets you select, it returns the result. It closes. Prompt UI is complete. Um, let's move this down here. So yeah, so now I'm working on this part. Mouse will ask the player. Will ask if the player wants to learn the mouse language as a reward for helping the mouse. So. I'm sort of condensing this, this particular quest is doing a kind of a handful of things, a fair amount of things. Um, that's partly because I'm just trying to get these systems sort of fleshed out. Um, it's not going to be quite this easy or straightforward to learn the mouse language and to get the mouse as a companion. Um, in, you know, the final game or even like the first fleshed out demo version um, there'll be a little more complexity to it to this but I'm using this sort of simple quest right now as a placeholder to try and flesh out some of these systems get them working um, so really you just bring the mouse some cheese and then it's like he's so happy that everything's done okay so the mouse yeah let's see what happens now so I choose yes sure Nothing's actually set up, but I want to talk to the mouse again. Yeah, so in this case, you have actually, didn't actually even, um, oh, I have the notifications off. So it, it notified you that you learned, learned the mouse language. So the mouse actually taught you that, right? Oh, it actually happens. So right now it's happening when I talk to the mouse again. Before it goes to display this text, 
I actually just learned the entire mouse language here. Um, so this is sort of what I all what I want to move. I'll move this down here. that makes sense so what I would like I don't want you to be able to get the mouse as a companion unless you know the mouse language like you're fluent in mouse language so if you say no if the mouse asks you do you want to learn my language and you say no then nothing happens you talk to the mouse again and it will ask you again if you want to learn the language or if you say yes, you learn the language. And then if you talk to it again, after you've learned the language, it'll ask, can I join you? So this right here, what was that? Can I join you? So before it asks, can I join you? You want to see if you've completed the quest and is fluent in language. Mouse. So if you've completed the quest and you're fluent in mouse language, So I guess in this case, I want, just want another option here, unfortunately. Like if you've completed, oh, what is that? If you've only just completed the quest and you're not fluent in the most language. say like I can teach you my language if you like I did I'm missing a Parentheses, I think so. Okay, and so then this here, this broadcast text is going to be the same as this one. What are those two other? Oh, other. What is other? Player. Oh. Gosh. Oh no. <laughs> um, I forgot about that. Okay, so this is the callback. Yeah, I've made a real mess of this broadcast text here. Um, I'm gonna actually probably need to make a note of that. I'm going to put this in nice to haves. Clean up broad text. Um, okay. 
So let's actually split this out so I can see what's going on here. Something like that. So then down here, because broadcast text takes a callback, the text force teach words and callback arg. So this unfortunately, this callback here, prompt player, needs the player. So I don't I don't want you to learn any more words. And I just need to pass other again. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, right, so I'll talk to it. It completed the quest. It's asking me if I want to learn the language. I'll say no. I talk to the mouse again. I can teach you my language if you like. Um, so this should probably be this. All right, let's try that all again. Something's a little bit off. Okay, talk to the mouse. Um, I say no. Talk to the mouse again. I can teach you my language if you like. Do you like my entire language? No. Talk to it again. I can teach you my language if you like. Cool, so now if I click yes, uh, I should have learned the whole language. Yes, and then it says, can I join you on your journey? And then it starts following. Yes. Okay, that's super hacky, but it's sort of working the way I wanted it to. I can get rid of this call deferred. I never actually needed that. Um, probably don't need this. Okay, so become companion. What is that? This is in quest giver. Interesting. Okay. So this should probably be a callback here, or hmm. Yeah, I want to prompt the player again to ask if, you know, if the mouse wants to join or like, would you like the mouse to join you? You can say no if you hate the mouse, <laughs> um, but you can say yes and then it'll start following you around. That's the very beginnings, you know, very, very beginnings of the companion system. They just sort of follow you around. So I'll probably make prompt player. I call this it's like prompt player for
Prompt player four. This is so like join, like prompt player to join party, prompt player to become companion, prompt player. What am I going to name this? Prompt player. Prompt player for some reason. I guess prompt player. That's the most. I guess what's the word like concise, most descriptive of what's actually going to happen. Um, I don't need a reference to the player here. At least that's not how the companion system currently works. I don't know if I need this check. I'm just sticking it in there. You want a new monologue data. Would you like the mouse to join you? Do basically the same thing. And then this has become companion up here. why you need the player. Um, so in here, where are we? Can I join you? This is going to be, what on earth is this? Prompt quest, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is going to be fun, Griff, self. Prompt player to. Oh, why are these camel case? <laughs> Bro completely just broke my own naming convention. Player to become companion. This should also be an underscore. I'll refactor this one after. So you take that out of there, 
prompt player to become companion. So that's the first arg. That's the second arg. Third arg is the words you want to learn. Fourth arg is the callback args, which in this case is other. This other, which is the player. Yep, this is really, really coding myself into a corner here. Okay. Now I'm prompting the player to become companion, but you can say no. So here, I can teach you my language. So if you've completed the quest, you're fluent in mouse, and what is that? Is companion? Not. Expected parenthesis. What's happening? That one, that one, that one, that one. That one, that one. That one, that one. What? Expected. Oh. Where's that comma from? Okay. Yeah, this is getting super messy. Um, if you've completed the quest, if you're fluent in the mouse language and the mouse, this script, you're not a companion. It prompts you to become a companion. Okay. So I sort of want like one final elif is companion. something simple like that. Those can be null. Let's see what this all does. I also need to test this out when you're not completed the quest. Okay, I can teach you blank blank language. If you say no, nothing happens. I can teach you my language, it asks again. Okay, so you say yes. Still not companion. Um, it'll pop up a notification. Then you've learned the language, and then you talk to it again. So it knows that you've completed the quest, you're fluent in the language, and it's not currently your companion. So then it asks, can I join you? Would you like the mouse to join you? If you say no, the mouse doesn't join you. And it's still, it's asking you the same thing. If you say yes, the mouse does join you. I can 
teach you my language if you like. I can teach you my language if you like. So it's saying... Oh, interesting. That's super annoying. <laughs> so I'm just going to add these in. And you're not fluent in the language. Okay. Okay, let's learn the mint language. Let's let the mouse join us. The mouse is joining us. Hello, friend. Okay. Where are you? That works. Okay. That's actually a good portion of this working. Um, the mouse is now your companion in this case. Being your companion just means that it follows you around right now for no reason. Um, I, yeah, I haven't flushed out the companion system yet. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to morph into. Oh, and if it gets too far away from you, um, it sort of goes back to its home. But if you get close to it again, it's still your companion and it will follow you. Yeah, also this mouse sprite is still kind of a placeholder, like I haven't built any animations for it or yet, or anything. It's just a single sprite that I flip back and forth. I don't think, I might not animate walking animations for it, because it's small enough that I don't really want it to have single pixel legs. Um, but I might add, where are you? I might add um, more directions, um, maybe even just up and down directions to the sprites. Um, if I'm feeling really ambitious, eight directions, like the raccoon. Great, so that's actually pretty good progress. Let's close this. My mouse will ask the player. Gosh, I keep reading this. Mouse will ask if player wants to learn. Wants to learn mouse language as a reward for helping the mouse. Check. Mouse will ask the player to join. Oh my god. Mouse will ask to join player on their journey. Sure. That's done. Okay, so I think this is mostly feature complete for this particular alpha version and what I wanted to build. I have a couple more to do's here for some cleanup. Um, I need to actually redo a bunch of crow dialogue. I might actually sort of erase all the crow dialogue and kind of start over. So it makes sense now with the mouse. Cheese. Oh, I wanted to. Let's do a little bit more testing on this. Um, let's actually go from the start. New game. Skip, 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 skip. Okay, so I don't have the mouse quest. I don't have the quest item. And something, cheese. I got the quest. I'm hungry, he's saying, I'm hungry. That works great. And I've tested everything up until then. 
once you go find the cheese and come back. That's what I was testing previously. So that's good, I didn't break anything else. Okay, so now I wanted to sort of start fleshing out these crows and their dialogue. Um, what are they saying now? These two crows have dialogue. So basically if I go to another crow, maybe this crow has dialogue, I don't remember. The dev never wrote dialogue for me. Um, but all the crows in the level will say that. Um, they did all have dialogue at one point, but then I did a little refactor to the crows and it broke all the references to the dialogue files. So none of them have dialogue except for these two. But that's sort of okay because I've actually changed the gameplay quite a bit with this mouse and the cheese and the quest. So I wanted to revisit a lot of the crow dialogues anyways to guide the player towards those things. So yeah, so these two crows are like, what's with that mouse over there? Do you see it? Something. Something, something. Um, let's open our VS code here. Um, this is not the right project. Uh, open recent. This one. So, our initial default language knowledge. So this is what you start with. Yeah, you got mouse, mice. That's fine. <clears throat> Sorry, getting Twitter distracted. Okay. So crow dialogues. So I've got this sort of demo world one here, and I've got all these crow JSONs. This is Crow 19. Um, what is that mouse doing over there? Did you see it? What did I call the priority words? Where's the mouse? Priority words. That's what I call the priority words.
So essentially what's going on here is that, um, you know, like you can see if I debug this or play this, skip, 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 skip. So the raccoon here, you can see all this text. Um, it's because you're a raccoon, you can understand other raccoons. You just know, you know, raccoon language. Um, and this is a fresh game. So if I go talk to the crow, actually, here, let's turn back on the notifications. Where did I turn this off? Why? Right here. This is a weird song. Okay, if I go new game, skip, 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 skip. So if I talk to the crow, oops, you can see, so these are the notifications that I had sort of turned off before. Wait. Oh. Yeah, I don't need to add. Oops. I was going to add mouse in as a priority word, but um, I sort of set it up that like Excuse me. I've set it up that like you know and I might refactor this a bit to make it more generic so I'm not repeating these, but you sort of know the words for each creature in all languages. The idea being that they're sort of some somewhat like standard words. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Not standard words, but like, like I, I guess just all the different creatures know how to identify all the creatures at the very least. Um, so when you speak to the crow, when the crow talks about the mouse, you just know crow um, you just know that it's saying mouse you don't need to learn that word you know the words for like the other creatures but what else is it saying yeah so what is that mouse doing over there so this actually won't have any priority words I'll leave that there for now though so you already know the word mouse but I learned the word what and see if I talk to this crow, four and R, I learned what previously, R4. So which, which is this one? Crow one. It's weird that I have crow 19 and crow one. Hello friend, what are you looking for? actually crow 17 I do want these first two crows at the at the very least these first two crows to talk to be referencing the mouse because I want to sort of guide you guide the player to the mouse what's this one saying what is that mouse over doing over there? Do you see it? Do you see them? This should be like them. Do you see them? So I'm gonna make a plus. the second one gonna say so that first one says do you see that mouse over there sort of like what is that
Um, let's not continue. Let's do a new game. So I might actually save, save here. So mouse, them. Is that mouse too? Okay, that seems fine. I sort of want to... I might actually move the mouse like down here. this way so you see these two crows then maybe you'll glance this crow and then you'll glance the mouse this is crow 14 yeah you can come this way this crow will be here to catch you Crow 14, I don't have a dialogue for Crow 14. What? Oh, it's still broken. So, what's that mouse up to? has been here for a while. I can continue. Okay, so we got this one over them. See this mouse? Mouse too. So it does, yeah, it doesn't fully make sense. You come over here, you see this mouse skidding around. It's much more actually obvious. It's not hiding behind this tree. Mouse? Uh? think is hungry. I might actually throw in the word think in here. I sort of like that where it said like think hungry. Think is hungry. Let's sort of assume that you 
didn't talk to that mouse yet. I want probably the next couple crows. There's a crow hiding up here, isn't there? Where's that crow? Did I already move it? Um, I must have already moved it down here. Oh, I'm dropping a ton of frames. That's exciting. Oh, it's because of this. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Really? <laughs> that's annoying. I just noticed that I was dropping all those frames. Um, you know, when I flip over to this world, it's like... I think because of all these shaders on the trees, it's actually like a little taxing. Um, I'm going to need to fix that before I make this level any bigger anyways. Yeah, even like zooming in. Well, zooming in seems to help. Well, let's stay kind of zoomed in maybe. <laughs> Okay, so that crow up there has sort of like, says, I think the cr mouse is hungry. Or that mouse over here, that mouse has been here for a while. I think it is hungry. This crow here, it should say something like, you know, have you seen that mouse? Like, because it, it wants to sort of guide you back in case you missed it. No crow 18. Yep. Okay, then there's these two crows. Ooh, dropping tons of frames. <laughs> what is this, crow 10, crow 11? I have a crow 11. Are you trying to head back to town? Try heading farther south from here. You might be able to find what you're looking for there. That's a lot of dialogue. Um, crow 10? No Crow 10. Oh, thanks for the follow, Polymathic Man. Appreciate that. Two crows. Right here, I sort of want to transition. So the, the crows before here were trying to guide you to talk to this mouse. What are the crows after here are going to try to guide you to 
Oh gosh, I'm dropping so many frames on this screen. Um, I might actually, just for the stream, turn off that shader. Where is that? Tree. Still dropping frames. Is it better? Even without the shader. That's super unfortunate. Um, hmm. I'm trying to figure out how I can work on the scene while I'm streaming. Have it not drop frames. Turning off the trees doesn't help. Is it the sp can't be the sprite sheet. That's phenomenal. That's so hard on this system. Neither of those actually really helped. Doing in a ton seems to help. Try to stick with that for now. Okay, so this was Crow 11. Um, yeah, this is a bit too much dialogue for such an early crow. I want to say like, because you don't know much of the crow language. Um, I want to say like, I want to start talking about the garbage and the cheese. So the whole first quest, when you talk to the mouse and you yeah, you get the quest from the mouse. It's to find some cheese. The cheese is located in the garbage. I want these crows to start talking about like, you know, oh, people throw out a lot of good stuff. Sort of hinting that like, you know, look in the garbage. I'm trying to hint that you should look in the garbage. Really need to sort of storyboard this a bit. But I just sort of want to hack this together for now. Um, good stuff in the garbage. What's this one? Crow 10. So 
So not every crow is going to have unique dialogue necessarily. Especially these ones, I might try to start copying these cross crows. There's usually good stuff in the garbage. Humans throw away. So many things. Let's get those in here. Crow eleven. Ten. Let's see how many words you sort of learn. Um, oh, it did not like that. Okay, well, I have to turn the tree back on. Load. Be wrestling. Is a wrestling kick okay. over there? Is what just seeing what words you learn on the way? So, think hungry, I think is hungry. The mouse will give you a quest. Cheese, do do cheese. So also like the quest text here is find some cheese for the mouse. Um, that kind of gives away what you're looking for. Let's we'll see what these crows teach you. That one didn't wire that one up. So garbage many humans something many. Wait, what? Which words did I just learn? Oh, weird. Okay, yeah, I gotta change that. Interesting. I need to debug that. So it's trying to teach you priority words twice, unfortunately. Okay, let's get this crow wired up. Was crow 18? Okay, so now let's fix that bug in the dialogue. Um, actually add this in here. Priority words being learned. Learned twice, multiple times. Let's figure out what's going on. So that should be in dialogue node. Dialogue, dialogue node. Um, so the language manager is actually where you're learning. Learning the word, the 
dialogue node is where it's is what's telling the language manager to learn the word. How does this work? Oh, I see right here. So it's choosing a new word to learn. If there are words in the priority words list, it'll grab the first one. I believe also removes it from this list. Yeah, pop, pop will remove it from this list. And then it also removes it from the unknown words list. So the unknown words list is all the words in the current dialogue that you don't know. Unknown words. So just removes it from that. So right now, if there are priority words, it just chooses that as your word to learn. It's not actually checking if you know this word already. Right? So if you know this word already, the first word in priority words it's still going to be in priority words it'll grab it and then it will try to remove it from unknown words it doesn't exist in unknown words so it will this remove here just wasn't, won't do anything and then I'll continue on to learn the new word which is the priority word which is maybe a word you already know Okay. So this block here is what needs to be fixed. Yeah, so if priority words, if there are no priority words, unknown words is already a curated list of words that you don't know. Let's remove, oops, remove, removes an element from the array by index. If the index does not exist in the array, Nothing happens to remove an element by switching for its value. Use a race instead. This method acts in place, doesn't return a value. Okay, that's fine. Um, how do I want to do this? So I sort of want to. Maybe I just need to pre-filter the priority words. Like maybe this logic is fine enough as long as you don't know the priority words. I need to sort of pre-analyze them. I'll just grab them here. Tokenize pages, save a list of all the tokens. Save lists of only unknown tokens. Yeah, so right here, I also sort of need to go like for token in priority words. If So 
those word token language. So if you know the word in the list of priority words, so I should be able to do it. Said so you can do a race. Where was that? Array. Remove use a race instead. Removes the first occurrence of a value from the array to remove max x in place. That should work. Okay. Yeah, so you have a list of priority words that you want to be able to learn before any other unknown words. Um, this is useful for if there are uncommon words or something in the dialogue, the particular dialogue. Um, you can prioritize the uncommon words for learning over like the word and or whatever. But you don't want to continue to prioritize those words if you already know them. You don't need to learn them twice. So if you already know the word, just erase it from the priority words list. Then when you get down here, it'll check if there's any remaining priority words to learn. This might be zero because you've re removed the ones you've already you already know. That should work. Let's try that. Let's walk through and talk to all the crows again. View them. So these first few crows, their dialogue doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, you basically just see that they're saying mouse a few times. Is that mouse? Is that mouse? View them. That mouse, something, I think is hungry. Hungry, cheese. New quest, find the cheese for the mouse. Talk to these crows down here. You talk to the mouse? Hungry. Humans away. Oh, I didn't take that word garbage out yet. That card actually doesn't say garbage. Something. Usually stuff in the garbage. So this crow should teach you garbage. This crow shouldn't. Cool. That's actually working as expected. Let's go back here. So this. Throw away something like that. Set of the crow. Oh, 11. Good stuff in the garbage. Okay. Pro nine. You travel a long way from home. Are you going the right way? I might keep that. Sorry, I'm going to zoom out. This might drop my frame rate. I'm going to actually move this crow further in. Maybe actually like way over here. And we'll bring crow 12 sort of down here. What does crow 12, does that crow have dialogue? No.
This curl will just say something like, you know, town's right over there. is just that way. I like to stay near the park. Yeah, so I'm really just adding in the somewhat uncommon words into priority words. You may or actually already know these words. It's just like if you don't already know these words, prioritize learning these ones or some of the other words like for your. So wait, this is crow three. three okay so then you sort of come down here I kind of maybe want another crow here crow 20 sort of guide you this way This one will just sort of say something like a bit of flavor text there's no priority words here maybe scary um no this is just sort of I'll leave it off for now. Pro 20. Okay, right, so you come, what is that? Oh, that's the, oh gosh. Um, good old Crow 1.
is pretty old. I want to say like so the cheese, like the thing you're looking for is in here. So these two crows definitely want to hint that like there's something in there. There is often food in the garbage. Humans put garbage in those black bins. Bins. Something like that. Um. Definitely some priority words going on in here. So often put food in the garbage. Let's put garbage first. You might already know that word. Food. This is crow one. Dialogue, demo world. Crow one. Crow seven. There's no crow seven. So yeah, so this crow. Maybe this crow too will hint at the garbage. This little murder crow is here. There's a crow up here. Needs to be more in the open. Did I fix this crow's dialogue? No. Crow nine? Yeah, I need to, I was going to do that. Crow 9. So yeah, you're a long way from home. Are you going the right way? Um, I might just give this crow that dialogue as well. Oops. Crow 9. That's fine. Now I'm on this crow, crow seven. There's no dialogue for crow seven. Garbage smells cheesy today. God, that's too bad. Not cheesy. The garbage smells like cheese today. Look. 
Okay, that was Crow 7. Yeah, again, these are mostly these are sort of placeholder. Oh, hey! Outer Space Alpaca, nice to see you again. Um, these dialogues are sort of mostly placeholder until I actually kind of storyboard this out. Um, but I just kind of want to get something in place for this alpha version. Which crow is this? Crow 7. Okay, Crow 7's got dialogue. Crow 8. No dialogue for Crow 8. Oh, oh what is, what's happening? Wrong spot. Yeah, I got it mostly working. It's definitely a bit hard coded, um, but it sort of does what I want. I could show you. Um, leave that. Um, don't have a good save game for that, so I need to run through it a little bit. Um. Yeah, right now I'm sort of fleshing out some of the crow dialogue so it makes sense with this new mouse quest. Uh, so you first talk to the mouse, it gives you, he just sort of says, hungry cheese. You get this quest to help the mouse find cheese. I know exactly where the cheese is. scoot all the way down here. Normally you wouldn't just beeline for the cheese, you'd have to sort of explore and talk to the crows and figure out where you could possibly find cheese. I know that it's hiding in this garbage can here. Gosh, that needs to be fixed. not hiding in that garbage can. Oh no. Where is the cheese? I've lost the cheese. Um, let's save here. I think that is something to do with this weird problem. Oh, that was weird. In here, so this cheese getting removed somehow. Uh oh. Super weird. Um, where's this garbage can? All items. in there. Save. Is that gonna work? Is that enough? There's some kind of bug there. I gotta figure out why that garbage can might be losing its cheese. Put the cheese there now. Okay, so you grab the cheese. Um, you can see the quest is ready for turn in. Now I'll beeline all the way back up to the mouse and I'll show you the, uh, the box, how it works. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's a bit of a hike. Well, also, I moved the mouse a little bit further down. It used to be up here. Okay, so yeah, so now when you talk to the mouse, the quest is completed. You can see it was turned in. Um, the mouse teaches you a couple more words, so you don't fully, still don't fully understand what it's saying. But you can see teach language here. And so then this 
new box pops up. Would you like to learn the mouse language? This is still a sort of placeholder. Um, and then you can use up and down to select between the options. And I could actually choose no if I want. I don't know why you'd choose no. Um, and it puts the mouse in a state where it's still just sort of asking you. I can teach you my language. You can choose yes. You're now fluent in the mouse language. You get an achievement for that. And now when I talk to the mouse again, now that I'm fluent in mouse language, I can understand all their words. It asks you, can I join you? Would you like the mouse to join you? If you say no, nothing happens. You can talk to the mouse again. Can I join you? If you say yes, the mouse follows you. That's sort of the extent of the first mouse quest. Um, and the dialogue or the monologue box that I wrote is now working. And the mouse will follow you and you can talk to it. It just says, hello friend. That's about it. So for this particular, that was really the main feature to do that for the crows. Not yet. Um, so the crows are sort of mostly all there for information. Also, they're not, their dialogue's not reactive yet to the sort of state of the story. Um, these first couple crows are sort of guiding you to talk to the mouse. What's that mouse up to? What's that mouse doing? Uh, do you see it? Something like that, that says. Um, yeah, so really the main piece of functionality for this alpha version was getting that mouse quest working, which involved all the infrastructure to get quests working, all the infrastructure to get items working, um, and then that dialogue input thing. What is this song? really like the songs with the each in them um yeah the item infrastructure and then that interaction box so that the mouse can ask you questions and then this very basic like follow functionality so now to wrap up this alpha version so i can post it on itch people can play around with it if they feel like it because i just wanted to get all the crows dialogues making sense um I originally wrote some very placeholder dialogue for these crows, um, but they made no mention of the mouse or cheese or anything like that. And I was sort of tweaking their dialogue, sort of make more sense in the context. Uh, so they can sort of help guide you around. You talk to the mouse, it looked hungry. Oof. So in this one, um, because the cheese lives in the garbage can, the crows start hinting that like humans throw away things. There's something in the garbage. Um, did I do this crow? Yeah, this one's a bit more generic. It's like. I saw a raccoon by the houses. Humans, something, sometimes, something, something. So yeah, the idea with the crows and the you don't you don't know a lot of their dialogue. You're supposed to kind of explore around and like learn learn words from all the different crows as you learn more and more words. The dialogue from the crows start to make more and more sense. What did this one say? The garbage. Something like cheese. Yeah, so these crows are supposed to kind of be guiding you. There's food in the garbage. Humans, garbage, in black. This is supposed to be hinting that, like, there's something there. You go get the cheese. What does this guy say?
this is old. This is really old dialogue. Um, so I still have to do these four crows. Dev never wrote dialogue for me. Thanks, maths. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wrap up these crows dialogues. Again, this is all just, I'm just sort of adding in some placeholder dialogue. Um, eventually I'll sort of, once I get this a little bit more fleshed out, I'll sort of storyboard the dialogue a little bit more. Um, also, I'd like the crows to sort of be, what's the word? Have their dialogue change based on your sort of quest completions. Um, so their dialogue could be one thing, but then if you're completed the mouse quest, the mouse is your companion, then their dialogue can change. Don't currently have that functionality yet, but that's something I'll probably want to do for the next alpha version. So yeah, I'm going to get these four crows dialogue finished right now. This is crow eight. Crow eight, there's usually good stuff in the garbage. That's fine. That's probably fine. Okay, so yeah, this crow was going to reference the garbage. Um, crows, and then those other three crows, they're going to talk more about, where is that raccoon? There. Yeah, mostly linear. I'm not sure exactly the scope yet um, and how big I want it to be. I have, I do have some sort, you know, some grandiose ideas of this big open world that you have to explore. Um, but I don't want to get too carried away with like big open world, big open world. Um, so it is going to be a bit of a linear story. But you, there is going to be like exploration elements because you don't, the whole language mechanic is that you don't really understand what the creatures are saying in the start. I need to make sure that that's not going to be like sort of a frustrating or boring thing to start, but you're going to be encouraged to actually explore a bit um, and talk to new NPCs that you haven't met yet because they'll teach you new words for their language. And then that will make some of the previous dialogues that you've seen make more sense. Um, so when you talk to the first crows in the very first, like the first crow you talk to in the game, you'll you'll only know the words that that crow teaches you. So you won't understand 90% of what they're saying. Um, but if you explore around a bit and then come back to that crow, you'll have learned a lot more words. You'll understand its dialogue more. Um, so the idea, part of the idea was that I wanted that to be a bit of a puzzle element where if you happen to know just enough words or just the right words, you can sort of tease apart what the NPCs are talking about and figure out what you need to do next. Um, and then if you don't quite know enough words yet, if the, if the dialogue doesn't quite make sense and you don't know what to do next, you're encouraged to keep exploring and learning more words so that you can figure out what to do next. Hopefully that there's always a path so that you can sort of beat the puzzles early if you can figure out what the NPCs are saying, even though you're missing words. If you can't figure it out, you don't know what they're saying, you're always able to just explore and keep learning more dialogue or keep learning more words. Um, and then there'll be like, just for fun, there'll be like achievements and stuff for like learning all the words and 
becoming fluent in languages and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so that's sort of the idea. Right now, there's not much to the story. The original alpha version that I made, you're actually just, there's like a little raccoon hiding behind here. Um, when you talk to them, that sort of ends the demo. You found the, you found the raccoon, sort of you found your family. Um, a lot of the crows were like, are you looking for your family? Are you lost? So you sort of find your family and that's the end of the demo. Um, then I've added in this whole mechanic with the mouse and quests and items. Um, so that opens up a little bit more what I can do. And it's all kind of placeholder. You know, the mouse isn't, there isn't really an, an overarching story yet. Um, I'm really just, still just fleshing out some of these systems, like the quest system and the dialogue interaction system. The inventory and item systems. I think probably after I, I'll probably finish up these Crow's dialogues I can do right now. And then I might just be done this version. I think there was one, one more thing. So I fixed this. I'm doing the Crow's dialogues right now. There was this problem with the notifications. So the problem being that I created that interaction box that shows, you know, options that you can choose from. The notifications in the bottom left corner overlap that box and they sort of doesn't look nice. I was actually thinking about moving the notifications up to the top right here. Was that cheese still there? That bug erased it. So the cheese is still there, great. Well, also for fun, I'll show you guys something that I built. If I turn on my controller here. So there's always been like controller input works. Um, oops, I'm using a keyboard right now. Oh, thanks. If I pick up the controller, and start using the controller, you see that the input buttons change. I was so proud that I got this to work. Um, you can see that was saying like L and R buttons. Swap the items. Oh, it's not, my head's kind of blocking a little bit. But if I put the controller down and switch back to the keyboard, it swaps again. That's fun. Oops. But yeah, yeah, these, so these notifications down there, you saw that little notification. I talked to these crows. This is a couple months of work. I think I, well, I think I started in January. I guess that's going on five months now. Um, but mostly, you know, in my spare time and stuff. Yeah, the art is done by me. All the coding is done by me. Yeah, these notifications, I'm thinking about moving them to the top. The top right up here. Because essentially that interaction box like comes to like about here it sort of overlaps with those notifications. So I think that they're gonna live up there. The dev never wrote dialogue for me. Okay, let's see how hard that's gonna be. Um, let's commit all this stuff I have so far though. Crow dialogue, what is this? Oh, that was the bug. <laughs> I 
appreciate that. I'm definitely not an artist. Um, I've just been learning pixel art for this project. Um, I just sort of just wanted to learn game dev as a hobby and I sort of took on all the aspects, um, you know, learning Godot and GD script, um, learning pixel art, doing social media and streaming and stuff. I've actually never streamed before this, so, um, before streaming this game dev stuff. Um, yeah, I'm a software developer uh, as my day job, so I have some experience with that, but no experience with art. I'll just learned, learned since January. Okay. This was, um, so priority words, this bug I fixed here, priority words aren't learned twice. Aren't learned if already known. This, yeah, okay, commit. This bug was um, properly. Oh, and thanks for the follow. I just noticed, I just noticed the follow. I appreciate that. Properly test if monolog box exists. X is exists. Okay, what's this OSD thing here? Visible false. I'll leave that. Ooh. This is like most quest stuff. Um. That's a tiny shrug emoji, most quest stuff. I can make this a little bit bigger so you guys can follow along. Um, and then I just all this dialogue added. And I'll do world two. Um, oh wait, I won't commit that yet. I need to finish these last three. What's this mouse got? Or crow, crow two. Oh, isometric. Yeah. At first, I was doing like normal kind of top-down perspective when I first started this project. Um, and then I switched to isometric because I thought it added it added a bit of interest to it, like I feel like I'm I'm just learning pixel art, so I feel doing the pixel art and isometric just added a detail to it and made it look kind of more interesting um i don't know if i regret that yet or not <laughs> definitely harder to draw an isometric um especially stuff like tile sets because a sprite doesn't have good isometric tile set features yeah and mostly like actually like in here you can't even tell sometimes like if I go new game, like in this scene, apart from, I guess, this little path here, everything sort of looks straight on anyways. <laughs> you can't even tell it's isometric. Um, yeah, and the controller sort of, you know, up and down just goes up and down. I didn't try to map it weird. I mapped the dialogue, or dialogue, the diagonal, um, 
on the keyboard when you're holding like down and left that you're not you're not going down and left at a 45 degree angle you're going down and left at what is it like 33 degree angle the two to one isometric perspective um that way if you walk diagonal along a sidewalk you're actually following this line which is two pixels to one pixel instead of normally you would sort of go 45 degrees and then you would sort of deviate from that line that was fun to do and then also figure out how to map that for the controller as well controller still like if you use the um, analog stick it's a bit floaty and weird it needs a little bit of refinement it actually works not bad but yeah 26.5 degrees yeah something like that I'm not actually remember I have I don't remember what I'm doing <laughs> to get that angle um just converting the whatever it is the input strengths of the uh input buttons to be that angle um okay wait let's go back to these crows crow two i do kind of like the asymmetric like i i like that angle i like that it has more interest like a house like this you know it's more interesting to see the front and the top and the side it's just more interesting than if you were top down you would just see the front and the top I don't know I just find it I find I kind of like it. it does complicate things though um, I haven't gotten in, into any sort of like pathfinding or navigation stuff yet I'm sure that'll be a headache when I finally come to that. Um, okay, Crow 2. What is it you're looking for? Oh, your family? Are you lost? You should look behind the house. That's probably fine for now. I want these crows to sort of... Um, they're sort of referencing your family. They're referencing the other crow or the other raccoon, um, which is the sort of end of the demo. Once you talk to that hidden raccoon, that's the end of the demo for now. Crow two. Crow four. I think the crow behind the house can help you. They might have seen your family. Is that true? Oh, there's a crow behind the house here. I'll put this right here. So I'll leave that as crow four dialogue. That sounds fine. changing the length with rotating because of the perspective. Are you doing like the, are you doing sprites in what you're looking or what you're working on? Like you have like a top sprite and then like a left sprite and then down sprite and you need to like resize it. Or are you doing something else like 3D models or something? That many crows yet? Yes, yes, you're doing sprites. Have you met many crows yet? 
I don't particularly like this one. This is two, four, and five. Make sure I add some priority words. I or Richie. Yeah, the way this dialogue is working is that every time you talk to an NPC, Crow in this case, that you haven't talked to before, it looks through all of its dialogue and it will find the words that you don't know yet. Actually, the feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I've been contemplating. I'm definitely not going to go 3D with this. I want to do it all 2D sprites. But I think <laughs> doing it 3D might be a lot easier. Um, I think, yeah, I've seen a few people doing isometric pixel art games in Unity, and Unity sort of, I only have limited experience with Unity, but Unity sort of defaults to 3D. You're sort of using 3D as a pseudo 2D. I think it makes some things easier. But regardless, if you're doing isometric or even just top down or whatever, and you're doing 2D sprites, you, there's just, you just gotta draw all the sprites. <laughs> there's a ton. Um, especially like for my raccoon, I made eight way, eight way sprites. I wanted at least the protagonist to have eight way sprites. I don't think anyone else is really gonna have eight ways, but that's a lot of sprites. Every animation, you need eight directions. Right now that's just walking. Um, the idle animation is only one frame, but eventually I wanna have some sort of cute idle animation. Well, part of my problem is I'm using Unity. Yeah, I started, I started actually last summer when I first went into lockdown, uh, I started learning Unity because I wanted to st sort of start game dev as a hobby and I was like, yeah, I'll learn Unity. That's what people learn. I did some YouTube tutorials. It was fun. It was interesting. Excuse me. But um, yeah, then this, uh, then I kind of dropped it off for a while for the winter. I didn't didn't do anything on it. I was busy with work and stuff. And then in January, I wanted to pick it up again, and I decided I'll switch. I'll learn Godot instead, and GGScript instead of C e Sharp. It's been good. I actually, I don't mind Godot. I can't really say if it's better or worse than Unity um, because I don't really know Unity that well. But I think Godot is a lot, a lot more user friendly. That's for sure. And a lot cleaner. Like it's, it's interface and stuff like that is more thoughtful. <clears throat> So this is Crow 2. Uh, what are some priority words in here? Family. Family. Oh yeah, so whenever you talk to a new NPC, it's gonna, it looks through all the words in their dialogue. It'll find the words that you don't know. It like checks, the, there's a system called the language manager, which sort of tracks which words you know in each language. And then it will teach you random words from their language. So every time you talk to a new NPC, they'll teach you some words that they that are that are part of their dialogue. Um, priority words lets you sort of add words into the priority learned in a priority. Um, 
So in this case, if they're given this dialogue, what is it you're looking for or your family? Are you lost? You should look behind the houses. It'll choose, let's say like two words out of there at random to learn. But those two words could be like look and you. Um, so the priority words just lets me choose words that I think are maybe important that I'd sort of rather you learned. Um, and then only if you don't already know those words, you'll learn this priority words first. Um, if you already know all the priority words, then it'll just choose words at random from the remaining words you don't know. I think, because I want these this group of crows to sort of guide you towards that final raccoon, sort of in the demo. Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have someone helping you with that. My partner's been thinking about learning pixel art uh, and helping with the game. She just hasn't had time to really do that. She does a bit of graphic design and stuff for her work. Um, so she's been interested in learning, learning pixel art. But so far it's been just me. Actually, I was going to say, um, after doing the stuff with the crows, and actually I'm going to try to wrap up this like 0 .0 0.0.7 version. I want to get back into, I didn't really do any art for this version at all. Um, it's all just UI and backend logic. I want to do some more pixel art and add some more stuff to the game. I don't know exactly what that's going to be yet. I know I want to add some animations to these garbage cans so that when you open them, it makes more sense that they're like opening. Um, so it's a bit cl more clear what's actually going on. You're looking in the garbage can. I don't know what think, but I think Maybe I need to add some more sprites to the mouse. Maybe polish up the mouse sprite a little bit. I don't know what's next. Add something else. I'd like to add, at some point, I'd like to add sort of interactive grass so that the grass can kind of, or at least these sort of special grasses can kind of move as you walk by them. I've been contemplating how to do that. I like that sort of small interaction element. I think it adds a lot. So that's crow two, crow four. This one might have similar. Behind the house. I'm just gonna say behind. And then this one was crow five. There was a raccoon behind the house. They might be looking for you. Or there is, there is another raccoon behind the house. They might be looking for you. Yeah, sure. Again, this is all like placeholder dialogue. I'm just trying to get something. Last words for two. First thing he made and remade was tracks. 63 sprites. Ooh. Tracks for what? Is that like, you mean like footprints or like race tracks? That's another thing I need to work on is getting um, Godot's this idea of sprite atlases. They're called rail tracks. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's cool. 
kind of game are you building? You mentioned that where there was like planes, railroad tracks. Is it some kind of city builder type thing or what is it that you're working on? Transport Tycoon, that's cool. Yeah, I probably should have done something more along those lines. Instead I decided to build an RPG. I don't really know why I decided to build an RPG. Um I guess I just sort of latched onto the idea of the raccoon and Thought that that could be fun and decided to go with it. Now I'm building a raccoon RPG. <laughs> I'm not the best like storyteller, so I don't know if this was a good uh, game genre choice. Okay, so this is Crow 5. Make sure their dialogue's hooked up. Nice. Five. Yeah, really what, what sparked the idea for this game for me is that I wanted there to be like, and I know there's actually a lot of people that are doing very similar things. Um, I follow a few different people on Twitter. Of course, I can't think of the names off the top of my head. I wanted to make a s sort of simple RPG where there isn't any like fighting or violence as maybe like cliche as that sounds. Oh, thanks for the follow geek Swede. Um, I feel like so many games just rely on these tropes of violence and fighting and weapons. And I just wanted to, I just had this like urge to make just a friendly game that doesn't rely on those tropes, but hopefully I can find some other way to make it engaging. Puzzles and this sort of language element and exploration and that kind of stuff. I was a bit inspired by uh, a short hike. If you've ever played that uh, game. Also, this is probably a bit ambitious for my first game. A lot of people are like, you know, start small, build your, you know, your first game should be small. And I was like, ah, open world RPG, that's not small enough. We'll see. <laughs> Fly in my drink. Disgusting. Okay. Is that all of these crows? This crow has dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. This person has dialogue. Which dialogue do they have? Human one. Oh, I kind of want to change this, so I want a second human dialogue. I want this person to hint that there is a raccoon behind their house. Yeah, too big for your first one. It's an interesting choice to make, right? Do you? Like, I just sort of just want to learn. I just like to learn things. Like, I like to take projects on as a way to teach myself some skill. 
In this case, it's like Godot, GDScript, pixel art, as well as like social media marketing in a way. Um, You know, if, if your goal is to learn and to teach yourself, then the size of the project doesn't really matter. If your goal is to finish the project, sell it, maybe the size of the project is influential. Um, I'd really like to finish this game. And I think that I'm sort of, I'm going to build it in a way where I can kind of rein in the scope a little bit basically just how long I want it to be. Do I want it to take an hour to beat the game? Do I want it to take eight hours? Do I want it to take 20 hours? Um, I can sort of flesh it out more and more. Uh, what do I want this person to say? I want this person to hint that there's a raccoon behind their house. Also, these people are very placeholder. Like, I've literally been referring to them as, like, mannequins, I think? Oh no, scale humans? Um, that's why they look uh, just like white ghosts. Like, they'll have, like, clothes and stuff eventually and not be, like, only white. Um, They're just extremely placeholder right now. One thing that's really helped me is being comfortable with like placeholder things. I find that I've been able to make a lot more progress and a lot quicker progress, not trying to perfect everything. Um, for example, the mouse, I was doing all this stuff with the mouse earlier. Um, doing this quest, other stuff like getting the mouse to follow you, and all I did was make a single mouse sprite, and I just flip it based on whatever direction they're walking, and then I stuck that in, and that's sort of placeholder for the mouse. Eventually I'd like to flesh out more mouse sprites and have different directions and maybe animations and stuff, but sort of getting it in there and working really helped. Spring 2019. Yeah, many years to finish. Yeah, I've sort of set the goal. What's my goal? I think kind of by the end of this year, the end of 2021, I want to have a somewhat fleshed out demo version where a lot of the mechanics are fleshed out there's a bunch of the graphics are done and I can sort of have a demo version. Here's the demo of the game and then sort of decide like, is this something I want to continue? Is this something I want to follow through all the way to the end? If that's the case, if I do want to continue and follow through, do I want to keep like plugging away on weekends? In that case, it's going to take another year or two. Do I want to do something like a Kickstarter? Am I going to take it that seriously? Um, to try and finish the game like sooner? Maybe take a little time off work or something? I definitely don't want to quit my job and become a full-time game dev. That's not my goal. Um, but yeah, do I want to like do a Kickstarter and try and take this seriously? Um, if that's the case, I probably want to like try and get a bit more of like a social media following and that stuff first. Yeah, just trying to figure out like, I'm fine with like kind of moving slowly and trying to figure out how seriously I want to take this. That's kind of where I am now. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I want this person to hint that there's a raccoon behind the house. There are too many raccoons around. I 
just saw one behind my house. Behind house. Uh, yeah, that's probably good. This is human two. from Scram. Okay, let's test out some of this. I think I can continue. I'm down here. Oh, I need to make an icon for the people. They're just using this pink exclamation. That's like the default icon for the notifications. Oh yeah, I was going to change the notification location too. I can probably do that. Um, I see. Yeah, so you don't fully understand it. Scram Raccoon. Two years after finishing your studies. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in university? Do you mean uh, dual study, like you're doing some kind of double major? It's tricky, you know, it's tricky to work on a big project when you've got other, other things going on. Luckily I'm not in school right now, but I do have a full-time job. Crow behind the house. I don't really know much crow words right now, so this is maybe a little less washed out than I wanted it to be. <clears throat> this guy's got to say, I've traveled from, don't really understand what they're saying. There's crow over here. This one, yeah, need to fix that one. Humans, keep them. That one doesn't make much sense. Something's usually in the garbage. Okay, so this, uh, I talked to this crow before, but now I no more words, so maybe it'll make more sense. The garbage cheese, man, not that much more sense. It's food in the garbage. Humans garbage in black. So there's that one crow up there I need to fix. So are you like schooling in a company? So are you like working for someone that's paying for studies? Is that, what do you mean by schooling in a company? I don't really know how that works. Tunes. Behind house. Actually, let's go talk to that raccoon. I haven't talked to this raccoon in a long time. This might be completely broken. Oh, the dev never wrote dialogue for me. Oh, I should probably hide these elements. Thanks for playing the demo. Feel free to send us your feedback. Follow us on itch.io, wolfbeatgames.itch.io, and on Twitter, at wolfbeatgames, to see our progress. 
please leave a comment or tweet at us with your feedback. Check back again for new updates. Cool, okay. A few things I need to fix with that. This quest stuff shouldn't be showing now. Um, let's fix this crow first. Crow six. That I already have. Six, your family is over there. See them. That's fine. Crow six. So I want to also fix this raccoon here. I did have raccoon dialogue. So this is Oh, so do you mean like you're doing like a work term like like you're doing two semesters in university studying and then you have one at a company like is that one at a company is that just you're just working and then one to two in university and so on so you sort of do work terms then study terms then work terms I think we have something very similar here that's what I did that other you found me and gone for so long I don't want to say you found me I want to say like you've you've come yeah you found me it's probably fine okay so this is raccoon 2 so this raccoon Hey Funky Jamma, thanks for the follow. I cannot see what that overlay looks like. I put this little follow overlay, um, but I've only ever seen it in my tiny preview, my tiny preview in OBS. I actually have no idea what it says or looks like. I can't even make it out. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, we call that uh, a co-op program here um, at my university. That's actually how I got my job that I'm working at full time now. Um, hey, Crinkles1989, thanks for the follow. Um, yeah, I was studying computer science and I did, we call them co-op terms. <laughs> You're intrigued. Um, and I actually did my co-op terms at my current job and they offered me a full-time position and I, I took it. I actually, uh, dropped out of university, <laughs> dropped out of computer science. Not, not, not exactly dropped out. I can always go back, you know, I guess that's dropped out. Um, it's always there waiting for me. I'm just working right now instead. But I got that job offer through the co-op program and the work terms I was doing at university. Okay, you found me. Okay, I just want to fix up the bug or the couple bugs in this sort of final state thing. Um, just because I'm thinking about it now. I don't want to forget about it. Uh, so let's continue. I'm just going to beeline to the end. This is a very like alpha, alpha stage demo version. And the demo sort of ends when you find the secret raccoon hidden behind this house and tree here. Um, actually, well, so the dialogue will work. You found me. You've been gone for so long. And then it's sort of, oh, what happened? 
didn't quite do what I was expecting. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's make this a bit wide. Okay, it's been a very long time that you applied for co-op studies. What is it that you're studying? Are you studying computer science or like something else? Something not related to computer science? Um, where is that raccoon? It's this one. It's literally just a raccoon. Super generic. Um, hmm. Oh, cool. IT security. Nice. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, definitely. Like anyone who's listening, if you're in university for computer science or anything else and your, pro your university offers work study programs where you have work terms, it is, it's very good. I highly recommend doing that. Um, the experience you get doing work terms, invaluable, especially with computer science, but also I, I don't know how that applies broadly to other degrees, but for computer science especially and software engineering and all the related things. Highly recommended to do work terms. <clears throat> what am I looking for? I'm looking for this raccoon. The raccoons. Final raccoon. Oh, weird. I see. I have this sort of override. Um, on the final raccoon. It didn't do that, did it? What's going on with this final raccoon? Do. Yeah, really, I just, I wasn't actually intending on working on this, but I noticed that there's some bugs. Wait, when I talk to that, it should trigger that achievement uh, notification. Why isn't it doing that? So why is this dialog node done emit signal? That's weird. Um, I think this is just really old and I need to fix this. This dialog node, oops, what did I do? What's that? Final raccoon, what did I call that? Um, this should probably be signal manager. Notify, try that. demo you found me you've been gone for so long and then it fades over oh okay yeah so I need to make the bunch of the on-screen display not visible I'll be in this finished demo here oh they cover your tuition too yeah that's really good um, yeah, you get paid, yeah, you're sort of like, uh, 
I was the, what do they call it? They call it like a co-op student. Um, but a, in software development, a co-op student, you're basically just like a junior developer at most places. So you get sort of junior developer wages, which here in Canada, I live in Canada, by the way, um, you know, developer wages aren't phenomenal like they are in the States. They're still pretty good though. Um, so you get junior developer wages while you're in school. They don't cover your tuition. Um, you know, the Canadian government covers if you're doing student loans because tuition's expensive. Um, actually, part of the student loans is actually grants um, that cover a good portion. I think for me it was about 25 or 30 percent was covered. And so that's grants from the BC government, British Columbia government, and the Canadian government. Um, and then, yeah, if you're doing co-op terms, you get a decent wage. That covers a ton of, ton of the rest. Um, so yeah, getting, you know, 20 or 30% of your tuition covered is still better than nothing, but still not. Not the whole, not the whole story. Okay, so I want this to be able to hide the on-screen display. Um, so when it transitions to that sort of, yeah, tuition, tuition fees aren't as high. I think they're probably a, less high than here, but it's still good that some companies are covering them even if they're not, not that high. That's cool. I don't think I really have the functionality to do that yet, do I? Do I have any signals? On-screen display, OSD show. Does that also let me hide it? OSD show, on an OSD show. Yeah, it does let me hide it. So I want to, this should actually have this variable in it. This is, this is more like a toggle. I never know what to call this variable. Like OSD show true will display the on-screen display. OSD show false will hide the on-screen display. So what is that true false flag? What do you call that? Toggle? Toggle flag? I don't know. Just toggle, I think I've been calling it. Or visible, I think I've called it. Oh, no. Enabled. Toggle input. I think visible, I think I've actually been calling this flags like that. Oh, let's see if that'll just work. If I go to the raccoon here, maybe even just before I change the scene, I emit the OSD, OSD show false. Let's see if that works. Oh, 3 a.m., yes. I hope you have a great sleep. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciated the chats. Okay, let's just make sure this... Okay, so we got the finished demo. It hid most things, just not that. Is that all right? That's probably all right. I can probably just move this. It doesn't need to be there. Hmm. Let's do that. 
earth is that scene called? So long since I've touched that scene. Where is that? Okay, it's not in util, it's probably in title screen. Okay, where are World, oh, world, thank you. Um, zoom out, zoom out. Yeah, so I have that dialog node right there. I can just move it up a bit. Put it like there. Let's just try that. Okay, I didn't want to spend too much time on this. I just wanted to fix those couple bugs. At least make it look like I sort of what it should look like. Yeah, that looks fine. It's a bit weird that there's just a speech bubble out of nowhere, but then it goes back here. But that's fine. Um, let's commit those changes. Final raccoon and thank you screen signal manager. I can discard that. Oh no, I want to keep that. What's this called? Um Fix a few bugs with demo completion. Something like that. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so the final thing that hopefully I can finish this stream is I want to move the notifications to the top right at the bottom left. So right now, these are the notifications down here, where it's like you're learning these words, they're in the bottom left. I think I want to actually try to move them to the top right and see how that looks. Just because there's a few different UI elements that I've started to put along the bottom, and I, I'm already running into conflicts where they're overlapping. Um, so there's really nothing up here right now. You have sort of quests. Your, your active quests will be in the top left. Your notifications will be in the top right. And then other UI stuff will be along the bottom. Okay, so let's see how complicated that's going to be. Where's notifications? In their own folder. Oh, it's probably in UI. Alerts. Alerts, I called it before. Um, and then on screen display, you have this notification list. So that lives over here. It's anchored there. So the first thing you're going to want to change is anchor it to the top right. Let's just see what that looks like. I think because it's still going to grow up, so it's going to be a bit weird. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's not fun. Um, so the notifications, they grow this way <laughs> right now. So that's going to be a ton of work to get them to grow the other way. I don't think I want to do that right now, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't think about that.
Hmm. I think that I'm not going to do that. So I fixed all the crow's dialogues and I'm actually going to move this. Control C. Uh, what am I trying to do? Delete this. Delete. I'm going to put this in the nice to haves. Move notifications to the top. The top right corner. Yeah. So those, so the issue that I'm thinking of is that those notifications when they animate in and even like they have that little icon and then they animate the text in, it's making the assumption that they're on the left side of the screen. That animation in looks a lot more, makes a lot more sense. If I instead want to flip them be on the right of the screen, The icon should probably be on the other side and they should animate in the other way. That's going to be too much work to do. I don't want to do that right now. Let's just play a little bit and see how much they're going to conflict. So I need to get the quest item to test this. And I need to go back to the mouse. So the mouse has this interaction box. The mouse asks you some questions that you need to respond yes or no. Or really they're offering you something and you need to say like yes or no. Um, but that interaction box overlaps the notifications. That's why I was thinking about moving it. So this is the mouse that has this quest. It doesn't have any indication yet. I need to have like a quest turn in indication indicator. So you talk to the mouse. It says that it could teach you some language. And then this box pops up. See, it completely interferes. Maybe. For now, I don't, I don't know how to fix this right away. I need to sort of plan out how I want to fix this. I think for now, maybe I'll make this box a little skinnier and I'll make the notifications disappear a little faster. And then that'll hopefully resolve some of the conflict. Um, and I'll fix it later. So this is the monologue box. What do we got here? Margin, left. Bigger. Make this a little bit smaller. And then the notification. So notification with this. Text delay. Duration visible. This should probably be an export, so I don't need to... Ah, whatever. Seven. <clears throat> um, okay, that'll sort of fix it for now. Oops. Come on, Trello, why are you being so weird? So, if I'm deciding to fix that later, I think this might be complete. Oh, hey, the Sky Brave. Thanks for the raid. How's everyone doing? 
How's it going? Here, I'll show you all what I'm working on. Um, I'm building this game Ringtail. Uh, yeah, let's go a new game. Where you play as a little raccoon and you're trying to find your way in the world. Um, you can run around. So part of the, the main, so far anyways, the main gameplay loop is this idea of learning languages. So you see these crows around. Um, if I talk to this crow, um, you don't understand most of what they're saying. And you can see these little pop-ups down here. You've learned a couple words. And you sort of, as you progress, as you talk to more creatures, you learn more words in their language. You understand their dialogue more and more. And then you can sort of tease apart what they're talking about and sort of solve the puzzles um, that are going to be in the game. It's not super far along yet. Um, I was just working on the first sort of quests. Um, I've introduced this idea of quests. I've also introduced this idea of items in the game. Um, and then sort of as just a placeholder, a test to test out quests and items. I have this first quest, this mouse, and you talk to it. In the same way as the crows, you sort of like learn a couple words. I start streaming while I'm working. Yeah, that's that's like exactly what I was, <laughs> sounds exactly what I was doing. Um, not exactly a game of week challenge, um, but I've been working on this game, so I just decided to start streaming my progress on it. Um, people might be interested. Nice. Yeah, I didn't have any major breakthroughs today solving major problems, but it's some good progress. So yeah, you talk to the mouse. The mouse like mentions you can you see the word hungry and the word cheese. Um, you can't understand really what they're saying, but you sort of can tease out that the mouse wants some cheese. Um, so you get this quest to find the mouse some cheese. And yeah, so you kind of, I guess from this point, from the player's perspective, you don't really know. Yeah, I took I took some influence from No Man's Sky, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, No Man's Sky was a, a bit of an influence for the language learning, um, how you learn individual words, and then sort of you'll talk to NPCs and you don't really, all you really understand is the words you know. Um, I do have it a bit, the language learning is a bit accelerator, accelerated right now um, because the game isn't very fleshed out. There's not a lot of NPCs yet. Um, eventually, depending on the scope and the size of the world, I want to kind of slow that down a bit. Uh, but yeah, every time you talk to crows, you'll learn new words for the crow language and their dialogue will make more and more and more sense. So yeah, you get this quest for the, for the cheese for the mouse and then you sort of start exploring around. You're trying to find cheese. You talk to all the crows, there's crows everywhere. Oh, oh no, a bug. I found a bug. I don't have control yet. How did that happen? Skipping to the end of dialogue. Oh, I gotta make a note of that. It's gonna be tricky to debug, I think. Um, hold on. um bug <laughs> yeah i actually haven't seen that before that's why i'm sort of like oh surprised by that you can see there's still this little indicator i don't know how um i might need to make that more visible that's supposed to be indicating that you can like a dialogue is sitting there waiting and it's expecting an input to close the dialogue um, so this is sort of indicating, oh, it went away. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Well, I was able to get out of that, but, um, 
It's also indicating that you don't have control of your player. Uh, the arrow keys and, and stuff like that are taken away, or the controls taken away from you, so you can't move around in that state. But it also should never be in that state if there's isn't dialogue showing. So that was a bit weird. Uh, got into, what's that state called? Input, what did I call that? Input manager. Dialog. I'm using Unity for a while now. I'm planning to learn new stuff. Nice. Yeah, I learned a little bit of Unity before starting Godot. I did a YouTube tutorial. It was a Mr. Taft tutorial. Um, if anyone's looking for like a top-down RPG tutorial, it was okay. <laughs> uh, wasn't great but it was okay he sort of uh that tutorial he was he sort of built the tutorial as he was going he was kind of developing the thing and sort of recording it as he goes so there's a quite a few steps of the tutorial or like going back and fixing bugs that he introduced in the tutorial but that's sort of a good way to learn anyways um, but i did that tutorial in unity and then earlier this year in january um i switched to godot Started learning Godot and GD script instead of uh, C sharp. I've been really enjoying it. It's definitely far more intuitive than Unity. Uh, the UI of the editor of the game engine is much cleaner than Unity's um, and more thoughtful in a lot of ways. Um, partially just because it's newer, I guess. Um, But yeah, yeah, Godot. Uh, it's definitely like Godot is still in somewhat early development. Um, it does a lot of things good, but it doesn't do everything great. Um, I think for this style of game, kind of top-down 2D games, it does most things quite well, I think, compared to Unity. But yeah, I don't have any experience with like uh, 3d or anything like that yeah i haven't tried unreal at all i don't know why unreal feels like even more intimidating than unity but maybe it's not i don't know if i my sort of intention was that if i ever finish this game and i'm still interested in game development i want to do something in 3d next um i might move on to something like unity or unreal for that project if if i ever get there um, but for this project i think godot is a really good choice yeah it's way more intimidating yeah plus part of me like i do like the sort of open source um philosophy of godot um i really appreciate that um in fact i have sort of made a vow to myself that if this game ever if I ever complete it, and if I ever am able to sell it or anything, I'm going to take a chunk of that money and subscribe to the Godot's Patreon. Um, sort of feed back some of that support. Um, even though they don't give you, or they don't charge you anything to use Godot, there's no licensing, it's completely free to use. I definitely recommend supporting them. There's a lot of great developers putting in a lot of hard work into this, and they've done a great job. Thanks. Yeah, I'm doing all the pixel art. Um, I've learned, I've been using Ace Bright and I've learned pixel art to do this game. Um, yeah, definitely shout out to Adam C. Eunice. Uh, he streams on Twitch, he has a YouTube channel. Um, I've taken lots of inspiration and learnings from him. He's an amazing pixel artist. Um, so I definitely recommend anyone learning pixel art to check out his stuff or like this, you know, not exactly this style, but similar, uh, similar resolution, similar style. I learned a lot from him. I recommend his channel, his Twitch. Uh, I totally forgot what I was doing now. <laughs> uh, oh 
oh yeah, I got there was that bug. I was noting that bug. Got into um, what's the state dialog dialog input state after dialog was complete. Um, couldn't move. Name? Uh, I was saying, uh, Adam, here I'll put it in chat. Or actually I can probably link to his Twitch or something. I was just saying there's this person who I follow on YouTube and on Twitch that I've learned a ton of. I think he sort of mainly lives on Twitch. Oh God, no audio. Um, so I will link his Twitch. Uh, this guy. Uh, even just watching his streams and stuff, like I've learned a ton of pixel art from him. Um, he also has a YouTube channel if you search his name. Very inspirational, so I recommend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pop. He's quite popular, so most people probably do know him. Um. I noted that bug. Uh, what was I going to do, though? What was I going to do? Um, oh, I was working on this. Do do. Oh, I just beeline over here because I know this raccoon lives here. This raccoon is just sort of the trigger for the end of the demo. Um, you're kind of sort of trying to find it. Oh. Um, yeah, this is all sort of working. It's a bit weird. This is all placeholder. Uh, and then it goes back to the title screen. That's probably fine for now. This is all sort of just placeholder. No, more, a bit more like narrative and linear, I would say. Like I definitely want there to be exploration elements. But a lot of the exploration will be, the goal of the exploration will be to be learning more language so that you can figure out what to do next in the story sort of idea. Um, so though, I envision that there'll be sort of points where like you're not entirely sure where to go, or what to do, because the NPCs you're talking to you don't you don't understand the words they're saying. If you get to that point, if you get to a point where you're kind of like unsure where to what to do, you'll be encouraged to sort of explore and to find more NPCs that you haven't discovered yet. Um, and then as you find more NPCs, they'll teach you more language. They'll unveil more of what you want to do and, or like what your next step is and, or like how to solve a particular puzzle or yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mostly still kind of fleshing out some basic systems. So like this version here. I'm calling it 0 .0 0.0.7 alpha version. Um, it's my it's the first quest and the and the quest UI. So that's that includes the mouse NPC because they're the first sort of quest giver. Um, all the infrastructure to like accept quests and to track quests and like quest completion, and then in this case. This quest is specifically, you need an item, the mouse wants a cheese. 
if I had to implement items and inventory and these like I'm calling them item containers um, they're the sort of entities in the world that have items that you can take items from currently that's just the garbage can the garbage can is an item container and then I can come up to I know I just happen to know that it's in this garbage can you'll need to sort of play around and find it um, but then you can grab it and yeah so then you have this cheese um, and then you can see the quest completion logic so that was all part of this version uh, that I'm kind of wrapping up now I think I'm mostly done I'm done everything in my checklist anyways for this particular version are you doing it with a singleton yeah I have a few singletons probably too many singletons um, I have a sort of quest manager singleton I'll show you my list of singletons I'm you know I'm not ashamed project settings auto load I've got all these um, the top three are really just very basic stuff global constants are just like you know, key binds and some colors and things like that settings are like your I have like tech speed and like whether or not your frame rates being shown yeah the quest thing so then if you go down the list I have a quest manager here so this is just yeah it manages the quests it has like a list of tracked quests it has a list of completed quests and it has a few a bit functionality to like test like do you, are, are you currently tracking this quest or have you already completed this quest so that other other entities can um i guess see see your progress um and then i do have other things like i have this item database this is just sort of a global item store that's that's knowledgeable about all the items in the world um, then I have the inventory manager which is your inventory what else is in here language manager so this is what tracks which words you know for which language so every time you're learning words um, it's this language manager that's actually tracking it the notification manager manages those those little pop-up notifications in the corner input manager manages um, for example when dialogue comes up when you're talking to an NPC oh there's delay yeah there probably is delay I don't know I don't know how to I don't know how to fix it is there delay like do you mean delay between my voice and the video or just delay between chat and the video Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the input manager. So that it just takes control away from the player character and gives it to the dialogue. Like, so you can click through the dialogue or whatever. Signal manager is for sending signals between things, sort of a central signal bus, chat and video. Yeah, that's just, maybe I'll try to sort that out eventually. I'm coming up probably close to the end I need to change it then twitch settings yeah yeah I'll tweak that probably for next round next stream game state oh yeah for this version I had to completely rebuild this game state so that now I have sort of a central game state repository so any entity in the game that wants to be able to track its state can submit uh, submit their state to the central game state and it will track it for them and they can just reference it from that using a, a unique key anyways that's my whole list of singletons I've got tons of singletons <laughs> I've sort of I was trying to stay away from singletons in the beginning but then it's just like it just works it's fine um, really it's only going to be a problem or at least I foresee it only being a problem if and when I ever want to add multiplayer because <laughs> um, then that sort of breaks all those things then there can't be like a single thing 
because there's two players, but I don't really have plans for that, so. Um, yeah, just sort of playing around now. I bring this cheese back up here to the mouse. Uh, you can see the quest complete. Um, and then essentially the mouse is going to be like, oh, thanks for the cheese. Like, do you want me to teach you my language? Um, this, this entire quest and this sort of chain of events is a bit placeholder. It's just, I'm just trying to flesh out these uh, pieces of functionality. Um, you're not necessarily going to learn them an entire language this early in the game, but let's see if I can click that and then you get this notification saying that you learn the mouse language and then you also get, there's going to be achievements for if you're, when you become fluent in each language, um, that achievement can be triggered by actually like learning all the words individually by exploring the whole game. Oh gosh, 7.5 hours. Oof. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the follow, Skybrave. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining in. I appreciate that. I hope you have a good sleep. Yeah, thanks. Uh, feel free to follow on Twitter too. I try to post on there sometimes, um, but I'm also trying to stream more often. So I'm glad you joined in. Uh, yeah, so now you can see it because I just learned the mouse language. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Colin, for the follow. Um, see you. You can see I understand all the words of the mouse now because I learned their language. And now they're asking if they wanted to join. You can say yes, and they'll follow you around now. I haven't flushed this out at all yet. I have this idea for like com a companion system um, where you can get different companions in the game. They'll each have sort of, they'll each help you out in different ways. Um, and they'll sort of follow you around for fun. Right now, all it does is follow you around and you can talk to it and it says hello. That's all that happens. So, I think I kind of want to wrap up this version now. I think that I want to, I'm trying to, you know, segment my development into these sort of alpha versions. Um, do I want to do that now? Maybe I could just do that now. Maybe I'll build this and post this. Um. And then you all can try it out if you want. I think so. Yeah, let me check. Let me check where I am. Um, oh, I need to work on like devlog. Yeah, all it takes is practice, you know? You start out little piece by little piece. Um, you get better and better and especially software development, you know, you can learn, you can learn software development through YouTube tutorials alone, entirely free. Um, so I highly encourage you if, if that's something you want to do, you want to pursue that, you can teach yourself. It's possible. You know, yes, maybe this is a little, a little complicated for a first time software dev, but you just got to build up, build up in complexity, start with something super simple. Okay. So do I want to work on, I think maybe I'll do that. I don't know how interesting this will be for people watching but I kind of want to finish up and post this alpha version before I move on to more development uh, let's 
make this skinnier. Oof. Um, yeah, I post, uh, at least for, well, this game is in alpha, um, and I'm still sort of gauging how serious I want to take it or not. I've been posting all these alpha versions as playable on itch.io, um, for free, you know, people can donate if they want, um, but they're posted for free. And... Yeah, just ha kind of helping, using that to help gauge interest. Um, I like to do little sort of devlog write-ups for each one. What else? I've been sort of writing this as I go, but I probably need to add some to it. Uh, in this update, the mouse character will ask, ask you with your first quest. They're hungry, need some food. There's some quest tracking UI. I talk a bit about quest conditions. I'll end up getting many quests. Sure. There are no items in the world. They live in different item, different containers, and you can add or remove items from those containers. Currently, you can carry two items. Oh, excuse me. The idea being the raccoon doesn't have a backpack, so you're sort of. The idea was you can carry two items in your two little raccoon hands. Um, eventually as the game gets a little bit bigger these item containers they're going to be different scattered throughout the world currently I have these like garbage and recycle bins are item containers you can actually put items in there to store items and whatever is in the item container will persist whether you added it there or whether it was already there um, so while you can only carry two items at a time, you'll be able to store items all over the place. And you have to remember where you store them. Kind of like a squirrel almost, like hiding nuts everywhere. Um, we'll see how well that works, but so far there's only really one item. There's just the cheese, um, but eventually there'll be all kinds of items. Language. So what is the... language. So I added this priority words idea. The words you learn from each NPC is random. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, the, the issue that I was running into is that because the words you learn from each NPC is random, if a particular NPC has a uncommon word, maybe they're the only NPC in the game, that uses that word if they don't teach you that word then you'll never be able to learn that word um, so I made this idea of priority words so that if a NPC has particularly uncommon words they can I can force them to teach you those words um, just so that there aren't words that you can never learn because the only NPC that knows those words or that uses those words didn't teach them to you. Uh, so I talk a little bit about that. NPCs also have the capability to teach you an entire language. This is what happens with the mouse. The mouse is really grateful for you bringing it the cheese that it teaches you the entire mouse language. Um, that's a bit of a placeholder for now. Um, I think that I like the idea of that happening, that a creature can teach you their entire language, but it'll probably be a longer sort of quest chain. Um, not just immediately the first quest you get, you learn an entire language. Um, it's just that way for now as I'm building the system, but I think it'll eventually it'll be down a longer quest chain. You'll have to do a number of things and then eventually at the end of a particular quest chain, you'll learn the mouse language or something like that. Companions. So once you complete the quest for the mouse, not only will they teach you the mouse language, but they can, they can become your companion and follow you around. Okay. Sprint. Oh yeah. 
I've been working on this version for a long time. Sprint's actually quite old. Um, just because it's a bit slow to move around, I'm still trying to figure out how to make that feel better. Um, partly, I increased the movement speed of the player a little bit. Partly, it's just making the world a little busier and more interesting, so you're not traversing long distances without things to do. Um, but in the meantime, I added this little sprint capability. You can hold shift on the keyboard, or I think it's X on the controller. You run a little faster, and you have a little energy bar. I don't know if it's going to stay or not, but it's in there right now. Oh, save game? Oh, I rewrote it. Yes, I rewrote the save game to use these Godot resources. I was just using JSON before, just straight up saving it to JSON. Um, but using these resource files lets you save custom types a little better, save and load custom types a little better. You're not converting the custom types to JSON objects. So that's nice. Input. Yeah, this is the control, the controller input. Last use input method. Okay, so there's one more thing. I think this is actually pretty fleshed out. There's one more thing I want to add in here, which is the, I forget. I don't really know what I'm calling this. The dialogue like interaction. Uh, so when the mouse, the mouse will ask you if you want to learn their language or you want to, or if you want the mouse to join you, that little question, and then you, it asks you and it says yes or no. That's actually the most recent thing I just built. That. We'll leave it here. What did I call that? Calling it like monologue, but I don't know. It's a dumb name I've given it in the code. I'll just call it dialogue interaction. Oof. How to spell that? Uh, so I repurposed the original dialog box box to work for dialog interaction dialog interaction um, now NPCs can ask you questions and you can respond player questions and you can respond and with their preset responses it's pretty simple uh, that's basically it it's just a little box at the bottom it can pop up with a question you can choose from the list of responses. I think that's probably good. Save. Okay, well, let's try to build this. Uh, export, what am I looking for? HTML5. Zero dot zero dot seven. What's happening here? Oh. Oh, I see. Um, I am using a different 
Bido engine executable than what I was using the last time I exported. So it's missing some references that it's Mirror. Oh, interesting. And I also need to download this. Because I haven't built I haven't built my game yet since updating to 3.3. .3. I was using 3.2.4 or something before. Great, now I have to sit here at this progress bar as this downloads. Downloading while I'm trying to stream. So that's great for my latency. Well, I'll also make a note, note to self to check into a Twitch latency. I've seen some things how to tweak that and fix that, so I can probably do that. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize I needed to download this stuff. Yeah, essentially I'm going to post, I'm going to build this to HTML5, um, give it a quick test locally in the web browser. If it's not hideously broken, I'm going to post it to my itch.io page. And then y'all can play around with it if you want. It's still very small, very simple alpha version. There's not a lot of game to it. Um, but you can poke around and play around if you want. Um, yeah, and then after that's uploaded, I'll probably sign off. Okay, that's taken too long. We'll look at itch.io. if you get caught. Well, what is this? Oh, you commented. Define it is broken. Thanks. Thanks for the comment on itch. Um, it's an alpha version. There's tons of bugs in there. I just mean like as long as there aren't, you know, if there's bugs in there that are sort of, I expect those things to be bugged, then that's not hideously broken. Um, but like, like I said, this is the first time I'm exporting on 3.3. .3. So I have updated the entire game engine. So if that breaks something, um, okay, let's try this. Oops. Okay, all those errors are gone. That's good. So version 0 .0 0 0.0.7. Yeah, so the choppiness, um, that's definitely something I want to try to fix. Um, it is because of the isometric view and because of the pixels, so it's snapping to the pixels. I need to do some camera trickery to fix that. Like essentially I want the entire game itself to snap to pixels. I want the sprites to snap to pixels, but I want the camera to move smoothly. Um, I just haven't done that yet. So yeah, that's something I'd like to fix. That is not fixed in this version yet, but I'd like to do that eventually. I think it's doable. <clears throat> Okay, wait, what do we got here? Your desktop, sure. I don't know what that does. Resources, I have my JSON files. Okay, this should work. Export project. Save. Um, where's that? 
Raccoon game builds. 4.7. Okay, so to test this, I open it in VS Code. I use the built-in VS Code server. Okay, it runs. That's good. What on earth save game is it picking up? I think I probably need to change something because I think it's building the save game into it, which isn't great. Um, let's uh, title screen. Oops. That, ah, still haven't fixed that bug. There's a bug where you quit to title screen and it doesn't it doesn't highlight or like focus the menu item so that moving up and down doesn't uh, probably gonna leave that bug in for now because it was a bit tricky I couldn't figure out how to fix it last time I tried to fix it so I might just leave it in for now just you know don't exit to the title screen uh, Title, menu, just making a note of this so I can actually add it to my backlog of things to do. Focus title menu, bug when exiting to title screen. That's fine. I think if I just refresh this. I got a new game. I'm just going to poke around a little bit to make sure this works. Scaling's a bit weird. That looks pretty good there. Okay, this all works. That looks like it works. I'm going to find the mouse. The mouse has some new stuff. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for joining in. Um, I hope you have a nice evening or morning. Not sure where you are. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. I hope to try and get into a bit more regular streaming. So probably Saturdays and Sundays. Probably my go-to times. So yeah. Let's just quickly go look at the items. Yeah, you can even see right here, going diagonally, it's a bit jittery. I need to work on that. How do you say that? Hiron Hironichu? Thanks for the follow, Hironichu. Uh, Bumble, this is... I've been working on this in my spare time since about January, so four or five months now. Our Chris Dyson, our our Chris Dyson. Thanks for the follow. Um, I'm just poking around. I just exported this version. Oops. And I'm just seeing if it's going to crash on me. Um, I'm going to post this oops, this alpha version on itch.io uh, as a HTML5 game so everyone can sort of poke around and play with it if they like. Thanks. Harcris, thanks for the follow. Just, yeah, I'm just sort of poking around at the things that I touched and changed for this version to make sure nothing's crashing. Okay, so the quest completion work, quest complete. Um, this popped up. The select works. Yes, so the mouse teaches you their language. That seems to work talk to them again uh, I understand all the words they're saying because they taught me their language so that works 
then the mouse asks if they can join, you say yes, and then they follow you around. It's just very basic follow logic, um, nothing fancy going on here. I just want to test one more thing. Oh, I gotta fix that screen jitter. Okay, so you come down here and there's a secret raccoon. Hiding behind here. Behind the house and the tree. This is what triggers, this actually triggers the end of the demo. Finished demo, you found me. Been gone for so long. Thanks for playing the demo. This is, you know, placeholder screen. Uh, yada, yada, yada. And it brings you back here. Interesting that when it brings you back here at the end of the demo, it does highlight the new game. I don't know, that just is a weird bug. Okay, so that seems to work well enough, at least as well as I expect it to work. Let's stop that server. Um, into game. Do I want to make a new GIF? I probably want to make a new GIF. What should I make a GIF of? Maybe of the mouse following you. That's kind of cute. Um. Okay, wait, let's save. Sorry, I'm just bumbling a bit here. Um, I just like to get this. Well, I, I want to make another GIF, use on Twitter and also on itch.io. Um, and then I'm going to get this new version posted and then I'm probably going to sign off. Um, so for GIFs, for making GIFs, I like to kind of tweak the resolution a bit. Um, what am I looking for? Um, I like the resolution that it's at, the render resolution for actually playing the game. Um, but for taking screenshots and videos, especially for Twitter, well, Twitter and Instagram, they show them quite small, a bit small to see what's going on. Thanks for the follow, idi idiocracy, <laughs> idiocracy. Um, oops, I had it. Okay, so I normally, I like to tweak this for social media, 320 by 180. Um, and then also cut this in half. Doing this kind of breaks the game. Um, and it looks a bit weird, but it's good for Doing screenshots. Eyeballs were a bit off there. Uh, what is this one? Oh, thanks. That's, um, oh gosh. Um, yeah, actually, I have no idea. <laughs> Never seen made in Godot before, so curious to see. Process and other engines, yeah. Um, that's partly why I started streaming is because I don't think there's a ton of people, especially streaming Godot development. There's a ton of Unity developers out there. Um, but I thought there was a nice little niche of Godot. So I thought people might be interested in it, like yourself. So that's why I started streaming my development of my game. Uh, right now, I'm actually just trying to find a nice spot for a GIF. I want to make a GIF so that I can post this version of the game up on HIO and just have an updated GIF to follow along with it. I think that I want to make a GIF of the mouse following me around. 
for my day job. Yeah, I'm a software developer in my day job. Um, I do development in a language called Groovy, mostly. Um, it's one of those weird offshoots of Java or like languages that are layered on top of Java. So it's essentially Java development. Um, and then some like React and TypeScript stuff for our front end. Um, can I join you? Yes, join me. Okay, so now the mouse is following. So where's a good spot? I want to make like a nice little GIF. Groovy, interesting. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend. I don't. Don't recommend Groovy. Um, it just happens to be what the company I work for uses. It's got you know. It's got Groovy's got tons of niceties and weird stuff in it that add on top of Java. Um, I don't know if that stuff's good or not though. <laughs> Uh, let's just record a couple little gifts here. So what am I doing? Um, I forget the key commands. It's like, yeah, I use uh, NVIDIA. Oh, it's going to record all the sound. That's probably fine. I'm just making a GIF. Oh, that didn't work. Yeah, Java's, you know, I learned Java in school a bit in university um, and then continued using it in my work. Um, most of the Groovy code I write is actually just Java code. I prefer Java over Groovy. Uh, yeah, I don't know yet. I don't think I don't think I'd rather work in the game industry. Um, I don't see myself working for a, like a game studio or something. Um, either A, just keep it as a hobby, or B, if for some reason uh, this becomes some kind of crazy successful thing, sort of become an indie, just keep it keep being an indie developer. Um, but I'm not betting on this being a crazy successful thing. It's probably just going to end up being a hobby. Uh, let's try to do a record here. Uh, what do I do? Oh, I shouldn't have clicked that. Not really what I wanted to record. Um, let's do that again. I'm just recording using NVIDIA, whatever it's called, to record some different little clips, and then I'm going to try and make one into a GIF. I like just walking through these crows. Okay, let's see what. Engine. Oh, it's sticking my main Godot now. That's good to know. Inspirations for Ringtail. Um, yeah, there's a couple. I think one of the first games that sort of inspired this was uh, a short hike. Um, it's not really. I'm deviating quite a bit from the short hike, but the short hike really inspired me to make like a fairly small, you know, narrative game um, with a little bit of puzzle elements. Um, it's not too big, broad scope, um, but it's fun. Uh, also, the lack of violence in combat, um, that's something that I'm quite interested in sort of keeping out of the game. Um, so there's not going to be any weapons or combat or fighting or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, and I'm also taking, I actually watched a really interesting talk 
from the developers of Firewatch, um, where they talked about how Firewatch is this sort of really like story narrative driven game and there aren't these, you know, points of made it in three months. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a great little game. I've definitely you know, over three months already, but, um, I definitely recommend checking out a short hike. Um, and I liked it sort of 3d pseudo retro kind of pixel art. It's not, um, pixel art like 2d it's just 3d rendered at a really small resolution i liked that kind of style um let's see what these little clips look like Should them video. oh i'm playing myself that yes i will update vlc at some point oh that was a bit weird and glitchy does that do that every time Yeah, I was sort of aiming for like, you know, I like to have a small narrative story game that takes you a handful of hours to complete. And you can probably do it in one sitting. That's sort of what I'm aiming for. I actually didn't mind this clip, um, or at least parts of it. Do need to fix that tile map stuff, those little glitchies. I'm just trying to get a little clip that I can use to make a GIF. I did that in this one, didn't I? Yeah, that's that's the one. Okay, so hopefully I can do this without tanking my CPU performance. I'll stop this game. I just use Photoshop to convert the video file to a GIF. Um, do I need to trim this? Trim the end a bit. Put there. Yeah. Call of Duty. Um, also, another inspiration was maybe a surprise uh, No Man's Sky. Um, I took some of the language learning aspects from No Man's Sky. I liked that when you met the alien races. Actually, I haven't played No Man's Sky in a long time, so maybe it's actually changed drastically since then. I know there's been a ton of really big updates. Um, I only played it at launch, but uh, when you met the sort of alien creatures or the alien, different alien species, you had no idea what they were saying. It was all like jumbled. Um, and then as you played the game, you would kind of pick up words and then you could understand those individual words. So then you'd have to sort of tease apart like, do you understand what they're saying? Because you only know two out of 10 words in their dialogue. I took some inspiration for that, for the language system in here, where you don't really know, you don't know what the crows are saying until you start to pick up more and more words of their language. There, this looks like a fun, weird little gif. A little zoop down there. Um, oh gosh, how long is it? Oh, it's only like five seconds. Right. <clears throat> uh, I, yeah, I use GD script. Well, I only use GD script. I actually tend to lean lean on GD script sometimes instead of using the uh, engine, whatever you call this, the engine features, inspector features and stuff. Um, 
I sometimes use GDScript in place of that. Like for, you can see for an example, on the thank you screen is white. I set the green color in GDScript instead of doing it in the console. That way I can tweak the green color if I need to, and then globally it gets applied everywhere that uses that green color. <clears throat> Yeah, I was sort of thinking about doing C sharp in Godot, but then I just sort of decided to learn GDScript, learn a new language. Um, the documentation's much better for GDScript than it is for some of the other languages that Godot supports. I learned GDScript. Well, I'm learning GDScript. But yeah, for those who didn't know, you can use Photoshop to import a movie file and export it as a GIF. And it's premium quality. The save for web legacy. Um, and then you can customize the colors and stuff if you want. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, C Sharp has tons of benefits. Um, and I think you can even tie right in to C if you're wanting to, or C++, maybe not C. I don't know about C. Uh, C++ if you want, if you're really going try hard. Uh, what attracted you using Godot? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say specifically what attracted me. I started learning Unity last summer. I actually did a few tutorials in Unity um, when I was very first getting into game dev as a hobby. Um, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Unity is fine. Um, I think I just started seeing, I started following a few devs on YouTube, watching their devlogs and stuff, and I saw a few different people picking up Godot. I decided to give it a try and sort of stuck with it for this project. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I like that it's being very actively developed and getting better all the time. And the Godot 4.0 that's sort of queued up to come out this summer looks super cool there's tons of cool new features I'm definitely gonna I don't know exactly how many features I'm gonna use of that I definitely like some of the typing features that are in there so they're adding a lot of um, better typing functionality to GD script excited to use that I'm definitely gonna update this project to Godot 4 yeah well I like I don't I think Godot is definitely better for beginners. If you're new to programming or if you're new to game dev, I would probably recommend Godot. Um, Unity's still like the go-to though. So if you're wanting to, maybe if, if your goal is to like get into the games industry, you wanna like learn game development as a hobby because you wanna get into the games industry, probably learning Unity is a lot better just because it's more widely used. Those skills will be more transferable to a real job. Um, but if you want to do it as a hobby or you're just a beginner and you want to make games for fun, Godot's, Godot's been great. And it's free. There's no licensing. You can make and sell your games. You don't have to give Godot a cut. <laughs> That's really handy too. And it's also open source, so if your thing is open source, you can contribute right to the engine. That's cool too. Uh, I don't think I want to change any options in here. Gosh, where am I? Um, uh, what on earth am I looking for? GitHub. Uh, yeah, social exports here. So this is, what am I calling this? 
mouse follow. 2021, what is it? Oh, five. It's been a long time since I've posted last on social media. Mouse companion. Something like that. Save. in here so I need to update the version oh I need to zip this where's that I can game builds 0 0.7 seven zip zip it ring tail okay delete this file Sure. Upload the new file. Zero seven. This file will be played in the browser. Everything else will be pretty much the same. GIF in here. Uh, upload. I call it Mouse Quest. I have Mouse Companion or something. Okay, did that even work? companion nine megabytes How on earth did I do this before? <laughs> Why isn't this one nine megabytes? I guess those are probably small. Um, I'm trying to figure out that this is what I've normally done for GIFs. I see that this GIF is 9 megabytes. That's more than what it wants. It wants like 3 megabytes. How should I fix it? I could just cut it really short. I don't really want to lower the resolution too much. Could cut its colors down. Okay, wait, let's open that. Uh, in here. Let's open this back up with Photoshop. probably cut it I'll cut it quite shorter 
Probably just that little zoop through the crows there. Up there. So like That's probably fine. It doesn't need to have that much info. And then we can also probably cut this down to 128. That's 3.4 megabytes. A bit weird. I don't know if that's a good GIF. Does it look like with 64 colors? Eh. Raccoon turns a little purple. That's annoying. Um, okay, maybe I'll figure this out later. I won't add in a new GIF in to itch yet. Um, anything else I need to update? I updated the version. Sure, good enough. Save. Okay, let's just see if this loads. That's actually new, I that little load bar there. I don't think I saw that before, maybe I did. Oh, it's got, oh, that's fine, continue. I think maybe this <laughs> saved, the save game's built into it. That's weird and dumb, but. Oops. Uh, it seems to work though. Yeah, here's uh, I just uploaded this latest version. If anyone wants to check it out, go ahead. It's obviously still an alpha version in progress. There's bound to be bugs. There's tons of missing features. Uh, it's very short, but you're welcome to poke around in it. Leave a comment on itch if you, uh, if you have any feedback. I really appreciate the comments. Um, post an update, so I'm going to make this devlog. Where did I have that? I have it all saved here. I was going to add a little pre blur. <laughs> uh, this is a pretty big update. When was the last time I updated this little calendar here? The last version I posted on April 10th. So, it was about a month and a half in the making this version took me quite a while. Um, it was a pretty big update. There was quite a bit of behind the scenes work that went into Developing the quest, just quest and item systems. I don't know what I'm saying in this top blurb here. Um, a lot of.
cool. That sounds good enough. Well, a little blurb for the top. Okay, title. This is a general update. It's got the attachment in case anyone wants to download it. Uh, the intention is eventually, so I've been uploading this as HTML5 playable games so far, the different alpha versions. Eventually this will turn into a proper downloadable, installable game. Um, my sort of plan is, is that while it's in alpha, I'm going to keep updating the public free version um, as a way to sort of gain gauge in interest and get feedback. I think as I move into a beta stage, once I start, once I have most of the foundational features built, um, I think what I'm going to do is end up making it sort of a private beta, um, either access through a Patreon or something else. Uh, in addition, or just like a one-time donation. Um, that's not set in stone yet. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and then eventually, when the full version is complete, probably... I'm uh, super annoying. Uh, when the full version is complete, have it for sale on itch. Maybe Steam. Maybe, maybe elsewhere. That's the sort of plan, alpha version, beta version, full version. Uh, tags, I've got like a list of tags here I like to use. I'll just type them out. Uh, no, don't need Oh, this should actually be I keep using Godot, Godot as a tag, but this should be Go Engine, that's the tag that they like to use. Exploration Language Adventure Metric prototype, sure. Don't put that any dump tag. It's not really open world yet. <laughs> And sure, we'll put RPG. Just some other random tags. There. Oh, not save. Um, cover image. Yeah, so see, will it let me upload that GIF or is that GIF too big for that as well? Most companion open. Yep. Too big. Super annoying. Maybe I'll just take a screenshot of it. out later 0 .0 0 
Yes. Cool. Edit. Um, let's stick that picture here. Well. <clears throat> that one didn't show a preview yeah sure weird enough cool oh it has a weird URL because of the emoji there that's fine okay so if anyone's curious about what's in this alpha version. This is the little devlog uh, to accompany that version on itch. Uh, and you can play it. If you scroll up a little bit, you can see the link to the itch page where you can navigate from that devlog. Uh, if you want to try the game out in its current state. Again, reminder, it's completely alpha. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be missing functionality. Um, but feel free to leave a comment. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably it for the stream. Um, maybe I'll try to find someone, see if there's someone on that I could send you guys as a raid. But I think I'm going to sign off. Uh, no one really online. What's in? What am I looking for? Um, just science. Well, who's up to what? A bigger eyes. Oh, look who it is. Sounds fun. Cool, let's do this. This looks interesting. What is this? Coder snacks? Okay, I'm gonna try this. This is my first time doing a raid. Okay, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I appreciate all the new followers. Oh, I've been streaming for five hours. That's a ton of time. My voice is a little hoarse now. Um, yeah, thanks for joining in. Maybe tomorrow I might stream again. Uh, we'll see. But let's check out uh, Coder Snacks. Wait, I got this. Uh, Visit the docs. Compile an No way! Oh, Tyrell is raiding with a party of nine. Welcome, uh, raiders from Tyrell. Oh my gosh. Okay, shout out to Tyrell. Let me. My uh, shout out thing is not working, so I'll have to put the link. Sorry. I uh, hope this is the correct link. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Welcome, raiders. So. So much is happening right now. <laughs> okay, okay, let's try to do a rundown. So we just had like a huge gifts up, biggest gifts up so far on